and Hawaii. Two teams desperate to taste victory. Each desperate to make a statement in what could be their final meeting ever. New Mexico against Hawaii, next. From Hawaii, it's live football action. Now, here's CBS Southwest Sports Director, Mike Powers. Live from Aloha Stadium in Honolulu, it's Lobo football. Tonight, it's the University of New Mexico Lobos against the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Good evening and hello, everyone. Aloha from the islands. I'm Mike Powers. Glad you're with us late night tonight. Now, let's not kid ourselves. This is not the glamour game in college football this weekend. New Mexico is 2-5. and five. They've lost five in a row. Hawaii is 0-6, oh a 12-game losing streak dating back to last season. But each team believes this could be the game to turn around their seasons. As far as New Mexico, their offense is starting to click finally. Over almost 1,000 yards total in the past two games. And look at Graham Lee, his numbers lately. He has been outstanding. Lee, in the past two games, completing 64% of his passes, five touchdowns through the air. He had his best game statistically ever last week against San Diego. He is helped by a couple of fine receivers. That receiving core is getting better as well. Germany Thompson has been the number one guy. And how about Martinez Williams from Albuquerque's Highland High School? The last two games, 14 receptions, three touchdowns, and he has made some outstanding plays after catching the ball and running it in. Well, let me bring in my broadcast partner now, Greg Frost is with us. And Greg, I know that New Mexico defense has really been hit hard by injuries. Depth is a problem. Well, it's starting to tell, Mike. They started three freshmen last week, and now we're down to six offensive linemen, four linebackers. Injuries have hurt. We've got uh, 12, 14 starters. That's about it. All right. What about your Greg's game day goals for New Mexico? Well, Mike, P is for pressure, and Lobo defense have to pressure the Hawaii Rainbows quarterback. They're going to put Bill Borchers in at nose tackle to try to get him his fifth and sixth sack, and hopefully he'll pick him up tonight. Uh, especially special. That's a special teams needs to be especially special tonight. They need to run in their lanes. They need to cover and tackle these talented rainbow return artists who are averaging 25 yards on kickoffs and 15 plus yards on punt returns. And then a blast from the past. As you mentioned, the offense has been much more productive since offensive coordinator Jim Fenwick has installed some of the 1997 playbook plays that Graham did so well in last year. So he needs to be a big, big player, big night tonight. All right. We'll put an extra cup of coffee on the stove or a pot of coffee on the stove. Stay with us. All all night long as the Lobos try to get back into the winning track. It's the Rainbows against the Lobos. We'll have it for you right after this. Now tonight between the University of New Mexico and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. Rocky Long in his first season at New Mexico has his uh, team over here. He's made this trip a number of times, Greg, and, uh, but not since 1984 when he was an assistant at Hawaii. Well, he came over here as a player a couple times, Mike, and uh, enjoyed some success. And, uh, and of course, enjoyed a few frustrations. I remember one time he was over here, had the offensive plays on his arm, and the referee made him take him off. It As wasn't a an infraction. Yeah, and he was a quarterback. It wasn't an infraction, but the refs over here said, you can't have that. Fred Von Oppen in his third season at the University of Hawaii, he has struggled trying to get this program uh, on the right track, just 5 and 25 during his two and a half seasons. Well, he's committed to uh, junior college transfers to try to beef up the program, Mike. And, you know, there's varying schools of thought about that, but uh, he's got uh, 24 JC transfers on this team. Uh, 20 of them are, so for our, are juniors and seniors. That's uh, it's usually not, not a very successful way to build a program. Hawaii will receive. Jason Bloom getting ready to kick off to Wesley Morris and Robert Grant. Kick is on its way. And Grant will run it out to the 15. Has some room. Still on his feet. Out to the 35 and beyond. And Greg, you mentioned Hawaii very good on kickoff return. Well, they're averaging 25 yards, and it looks like he got uh, 20 plus yards on that return. Actually, more than that, he was in the end zone when he started. So he's out, you know, 37 yard return. That's not going to hurt his average. Derek Milner made the tackle for New Mexico, the senior wide receiver out of El Paso. And uh, we see the flag on the field. They're uh, motioning that it's against the rainbows. Maybe there was a little holding in there, Mike. Well, personal foul, so uh, 
the great run back will be moved back, and that's kind of typical of the way the season has gone for the Rainbows. Well, that's what's been happening. They call those mental errors. Dead ball, personal foul on the, on the kicking team. We'll penalize 15 yards, first down. Well, it's actually the return team, but we get the idea. That's Frank White, the referee tonight. Well, the net result is as if uh, Jason would have kicked it out of the end zone. Uh, Hawaii's on the 20-yard line. No harm. Look at Dan Robinson, the starting quarterback for Hawaii. His numbers, not bad, not great. He's a junior college transfer, played at Rick's Junior College, and he'll drop straight back. Going down the field, and Chad Smith will make the tackle. And Hawaii in business uh, out of the backfield. Derek Zoller made the reception. Time now for our Midtown Reynolds starting lineups tonight. Let's take a look. The offensive line for the Rainbow Warriors. They have been uh, a little bit decimated by injuries, uh, like New Mexico on the defensive front. Wesley Morris, their leading receiver. And Charles Tharp, the Pacific Division Freshman of the Year on offense last year. Second down and short. And an awkward looking play there, but Zoller hangs on to the football, and that will bring up a third down and short. Now for New Mexico, LeJonte McGowan was redshirting the true freshman because of Barrett Garrison's injury will start tonight, his first start. The linebacking crew, Casey Tisdale is in there. Also look for Mike Barnett coming back from his ankle injury to see playing time. And the secondary, and, and also another guy on his way back is Ranty Harper. We'll play in Nickelback a lot tonight. He wears number four. He's blitzing right now. On third down and short, the pass incomplete intended for Wesley Morris. So the Lobos hold after Hawaii has a, uh, a second down and two yards to go. Well, and that was a nice play by the uh, by the cornerback on that. Uh, stride for stride, turned around, looked for the ball. Quarterback had to throw the ball way over his head to keep from him from uh, suffering an interception. Have a good solid defense that time. Chad Shroud back deep to punt it away to Chad Smith, who will soon become the all-time leading return man for New Mexico. Shroud has seen a lot of double duty this year as the punter and field goal kicker for the Rainbow Warriors. Looks like the Lobos are coming. High snap. Gets it off. Great kick. Smith will take it at the 19, and he's got about nowhere to go. And he did a nice job to pick up six or seven yards on that play. He is a gutsy player. There's Chad Smith. Nowhere to go, and he just he dodged in between two Rainbow Warrior uh, defenders and got seven, eight yards out of nothing. Joaquin Avila made the tackle, and now we see Graham Lee, who has been on fire, the senior out of Mesa, Arizona. His numbers on the season, in, in basically all offensive categories in the history of the University of New Mexico, he is third right now behind Stony Case and Jeremy Leach. First down, New Mexico at their own 21. Deion Marion gets the start and the ball for the Lobos. He wears number five, running hard, a nice game. He gets the start in place of Lennox Gordon, who has a broken hand. He will see action tonight. Again, our Midtown Reynolds starting lineup. Offensive line. Brown, Samuelson, Carson, Wallace, and Thacker. Wallace is the only Lobo to have played in this game the last time New Mexico was here in 94. We talked about Williams and Thompson in our pregame. Brian Johnson, the fine tight end for the University of New Mexico. Just a freshman. Second down and five for the Lobos. It's Thompson in motion. Almost trying to run with it. Marion up the middle. And he's stacked up rather quickly by the Rainbow Warriors. Tony Tuudi makes the tackle. And now for Hawaii, three-man front. Brian Tuudi, Correa. This at one time was a very good linebacking crew, but injuries uh, have really decimated uh, the rainbows there. Well, Steven Gonzalez is back tonight. He was a Butkus Award candidate prior to his injury in the fifth, fourth game of the season. That's our Midtown Reynolds starting lineup, the very best in Ren 2 0. Third down play for New Mexico. They have been very good on third down this season. Fake pitch, Lee gets rid of it, he's hit, and it's incomplete, and so New Mexico will have to punt it away. Well, the, of punts there, the Hawaii right? Rainbows in that, uh, you know, blitzing defense, they're trying to run a pressure defense like the Lobos are, and they were successful that time of getting 
two men up in the face of Graham Lee on that on that pass play. That's Nate Jackson, freshman walk on who is starting all of 5'10, 151 pounds. And Nate's Nate's a walk on and he is a freshman. So you know when a defense is playing a walk on freshman, they've had some injury problems, Mike. Let's see if Jason's got it in that foot tonight. Well, we got a little bit of a wind here, at least up where we're at. Gets rid of it. Good looking punt. All the way back inside the 15 for Hawaii. And that was Charles Tharp returning it. And so Hawaii gets it back. And after the exchange of punts, Hawaii picks up maybe three or four yards on that. We're going to take a timeout. We're so glad you're with us late night across the Southwest. New Mexico, Hawaii, no score. But we're with you and we're glad that you've managed to tune in tonight. New Mexico, Hawaii, scoreless. Second possession now for the Rainbow Warriors. Tharp with it, right side, and he is stacked up, maybe a yard or two there. Chad Smith at the bottom of the pile, a couple of other Lobos there as well. The Lobos are going to be running that 52 defense. They're going to try to bring five linemen now to fill the gaps and pressure the quarterback on the pass. You're also going to see a linebacker blitz, and they're they're looking for McCray and they're looking for Purvis to really, you know, come in there and put pressure on the quarterback. So they'll be stunting. You'll see them slanting, and then you see the linebackers go the opposite way, try to fill every gap. McCray right. wearing number 97. Nice shot of him there. Second and long. Lobos coming with the look of a blitz. Tharp up the middle and greet it again. Well, what that was, Mike, is the Lobos are standing their two tackles up. If you watch it, uh, uh, as, the, as the game goes on, the two tackles are going to be in a two-point stance. They're going to try to get them to get a running start at filling the gaps that they want them to fill. This uh, helps them overcome the size disadvantage that they have. That's, a, that's certainly different, isn't it? Very different. And basically, they're adapting to what they've got. They've got six linemen left. They don't have very big linemen, and they're going to stand them up and give them a little running start. As you know, it's a pressure defense, and they're moving to a spot. So they're going to let them get a running start and move to that spot. That should shake up this uh, this uh, Hawaii offensive line, Mike. It's and Hawaii has taken a timeout, and so will we. 10.30 to go, 32 to go first quarter. Back with more in a moment. We're on the all-new version of Hollywood Squares, seen weekday afternoons at 4. More than just X's and O's when you watch Hollywood Squares. Weekday afternoons at 4, only on CBS 13, 10, and 6. Hawaii had to waste a timeout, couldn't get the play in in time, some confusion, and that has been a continuous problem for them this year. Third down and six. Straight drop for Robinson. Across the middle. Great catch. No, incomplete. Carter had it in his hands. That's Dwight Carter, and he couldn't hang on to it. And so Hawaii will punt it away for the second time. Good coverage by Marcus McDavid. Well, and a lot of uh, pressure up front. You saw those up linemen, uh, two-point stance, stunting, putting pressure on it. A lot of pressure coming from the right side on the quarterback. Uh, Hawaii not very good at converting on third down, Mike. They're averaging 15% of the time, and they're 0 for 2 tonight. That has to be the worst in the country. It's, I'm sure if not, if not the worst, it's the close. Maybe UNLV's got them beat. I don't know. Yeah, their scoring offense is dead last in the nation, averaging just over 8 a game. Second punt. Chad Smith may have a chance on this one. Good block. And he picks up maybe 7 after that, and... And let's give the freshman some credit on that block. Fans here thought it was Richard Stafford. Yeah, yeah they, uh, I think he got clipped. I don't think he did. I think the defender turned his back. So that's my opinion. Officials agreed with no, me. So I guess that's reality. It's, then it's official. <laughs> <laughs> so the Lobos will have great position at the 45. I was listening to the coaches next door yelling clip. They're uh, they're looking for all the help they can get over here. Let's see if we can't have somebody make a first down. What do you say, Mike? We haven't had one yet. 0 for 3. Lobos decide to go with a three wide receiver set, top of the screen. Looks like Reginald Johnson, the lone running back. Quick pass to Germany Thompson. There's your first down. There's Rick West first down. Love it. And Germany so physical. You see him running that slant pattern, and he takes the ball, and he's really, really hard to bring down. 6'3, 208 pounds, four TD receptions. Going up against a 150-pound defensive back there. He's going to win that battle. Look, very nice. Got another three yards, four yards on the play with his forward momentum. 
linebacker Gonzalez, you talked about him a while ago. He made the tackle. Here comes Reginald, has the corner. What a block. Just out of bounds at about the 31. So nice. another first down for New Mexico. Nice block by that freshman fullback. He made the play happen. Talking about Jared Baxter. Jared Baxter, the young man. You see him cut the, the man down on the outside. It was yeah. an excellent block. And I'll tell you, you, you put a block like that on somebody and you're going to go for yards. Here it comes right here. Watch, watch that block. Changed. Wow. Oh, beautiful block. And you saw how he changed. He adjusted his tempo and he adjusted his speed and uh, just, just cut that defender down. That'll make the play go. Lobos driving now at the 31. High formation option. Reginald, if he can get a block, he could go. The stutter a little bit, and, and Baxter did give him the block, but uh, Hawaii was able to recover quickly and give credit to Ben Bright, the inside tackle for hustling on over. Good pursuit, but the Lobos will take uh, four and a half yards on a first down every time. They'll just take it every time. That's a well-run play, and I, I like that. I, I like a Fenwick coming back with the same play to the wide side of the field. You know, so many times it seems like play works, and he just doesn't want to run it again for a while. He came right back with it, picked up four and a half yards. Lennox Gordon is in the game for the first time. Has a broken left hand. He is wearing a soft cast. He's had a nice year, but this doesn't help. Up the middle. Maybe gets back to the Oh, there's a the I don't even think so. Matt Paul from Anaheim, California, made the tackle, number 47. One of the many Southern California players on this Hawaii team. I said they had 24 uh, jun junior college transfers, 17 of them from California. There he got grabbed by the shirt. Too bad. 17 of them from Southern California, and then another 17 high school players from Southern California for a total of 34 Southern California players on this rainbow squad. Well, at one time, New Mexico had almost that. that many. Back in the Shepherd years, yes. Third down and six. Quick pass. And it looks like Deion Marion has the first down by about a yard. Good that's, hands by Marion. That's the West Coast offense, Mike. It's called high percentage passes. You flood zones. You take the defenders deep. You come underneath with a good possession receiver. Put a big back at full speed, man on man with these 175 pound deep backs, and let him go. It works. Works right here. Deion Marion is one of those big backs, six foot, 200 pounds, good speed. He'll put a hit on you. Those are the ball right on the 20. First and 10, New Mexico. Some movement on that left side of the Lobo offensive line, and it may have been Brian Johnson, the freshman tight end. Well, you just need to know how to count to two to play offense. Ball start on the offense, five yard penalty, still first down. You just need to know how to count to two. They rarely go to three on the offensive count. It's usually one or two. But, you know, watching TV nationally, some of the big-name teams, they do the same thing, and it, it is a little bit hard to figure out. Well, those linemen, you know, they're, they're, they get the snap count. I don't understand it. Never did. Well, instead of uh, first and 10, it's first and 15. Let's see if how much it hurts New Mexico here now. Up the middle. Johnson smothered. Rainbows all over that one. That was going nowhere. I didn't understand that play. All the blocking seemed to go outside, and he ran to the inside. I don't know if it was a finesse play or what. I didn't see much counteraction there. Gonzalez makes the tackle. So here we are, second and 15, Mike. Yeah. The Lobos get down in there, and they just haven't really been dynamic once they get down. Yes, yeah, not the red zone yet, but it's close enough you can smell the red zone. Well, technically they were in it. Yeah, they were. They volunteer right. at the 20. Well, anyway. 20 and a half, but, you know, you can smell it. Second down play. Shotgun. Smells red. <laughs> Graham Lee, and again, movement. Mark back another five yards. Graham moved back. The receivers move forward. Jason Carson held on to the ball. Jason's moved over from guard. Prior to the snap, ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Jason's moved over from guard to play that center and has really done a good job. Yeah. I sat next to him on the uh, airplane coming out here. He had seven dinners. You saw him there on the screen. He's just about the biggest guy I've ever seen. Not a lot of room between you two there. New Mexico, the second most penalized team in the Western Athletic Conference as far as yardage. Second down play, quick release, Grambling. 
picks up some of that. In fact, uh, all of the penalty yardage to Germany Thompson. He was covered that time by Damian Arafalas, who helped make sure he got out of bounds. Well, you see, Mike, there's there's what's, something that's been happening to the Lobos all year. That was a second down play. They pick up 11 yards on the play. You take away those two offensive penalties, the Lobos have a first down on the 10-yard line. Well, now they're third and nine. And, and these are the kind of offensive mistakes that have just stopped this offense so often all season. Third and a long nine. Again, the three wide receiver set. Martinez Williams at the bottom of your screen. Fake the draw. Lee sets up back across the field, looking for Dion Marion, who goes, oh, it went right through his hands. He uh, hit him in a bad spot there, Mike. He hit him right in his hands. However, that ball took a long time getting there, and there were there were defenders closing on Dion. You see him right there, and you see this uh, 69 got his hands up in Dion's face. That should be face guarding right there. He did not turn on the ball. He does not turn on the ball. That's face guarding right there for the whole world to see, except for the WAC officials. They didn't see it. That's Mark Ballner who came on over the outside linebacker. And, you know, to be honest, he almost put his hands up face, after the it's ball. It's face guarding. It's face guarding. All right, here's Jason Bloom now. The Lobos have had some problems in the field goal game on its way and through the upright. So Bloom converts on the 35-yard field goal, and New Mexico has drawn first blood. They lead it 3 nothing. more from Honolulu after this short timeout. Lobo far on the board, 3 nothing with 7-12 to go. First quarter of play. Jason Bloom again ready to, to boot it back after kicking that field goal. That play took 36 yards, a little over three minutes. Well, actually it was 46 yards after you subtract those 10 yards and yeah. penalties. Made it more difficult. Morris and Grant are back deep. Grant had a nice return last time, and this time Morris has it. The wedge never really formed, and, and he's brought down after a decent return out to the 27. Well, Mike, that was an immediate response to the 35-yard run back on the first kickoff, and they have Jason Squibbit. So uh, special teams uh, coaches have said, well, if you can't cover the deep one, and Jason, if you can't kick it out, let's squib it, and let's try to make it tough for them to handle. And the Lobos covered. So that was, that was good special teams work there. Well, Hawaii will try it again offensively. Dan Robinson brings the team back out. Still looking for their first first down, yep. Mike. For it. Have some room here on the near sideline, and that's caught. The white quarter. That was a nice out pattern. Uh, ball was thrown very crisply. Uh, Lobos were on the play. I mean, you, you're, you're going to complete that pass. That's about how they started that initial drive. They had ended up with a second down and, and two, and they couldn't get the first down. Similar situation now, second and two. Well, Marcus McDavid came up good. He came up strong, made a good tackle. They got the completion, but they didn't get any more. Saw Carter's numbers on the air. And with the slot this time. Quick pitch, start. Good speed, has some room. McDavid tries to chase him down and does, but Hawaii has a first down at the 48 of New Mexico. Well, a Lobo back, Brian Erlacher, one of his few misses. He, uh, he came to the left side hard. He missed the tackle at the line of scrimmage. You'll see him right here, and he's going to miss this tackle right here. Brian's supposed to make that tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Blocked by Derek Zolo. It's a Hawaii business at the 48. Marcus McDavid getting a lot of action out there. They're passing at him. They're running wide at him. So far, he's played pretty tough. Coming into, uh, coming into this game, Tharp with 270 yards in the season, and that's way down from last year. In fact, last year at 114 against Notre Dame. His way to over 700 for the season. Almost coming with the blitz. Hawaii picks it up. Throw is a little bit high, but I thought uh, Wesley Morris should have had that. Wesley was wide open yeah. on that play, and the quarterback got a lot of time. We haven't seen much pressure, Mike. We haven't seen a sack. Uh, Lobo defense simply has to get pressure on the quarterback. He'll stand back there and pick him apart. But David's a guy that. Bronco Mendenhall, the defensive coordinator, said, if I get a fight in an alley somewhere, 
I want Marcus McDavid with me. He's a scrappy guy. He's a gutty guy. And he's all of, uh, you know, 169, 70 pounds. Yeah, he looks like a trainer when he gets on the plane. He's not like one of the players. Mark dances his way into the secondary for New Mexico. Mike Barnett is down there, had an ankle injury and uh, missed last week's game, but he is back. The Rainbow Backs are averaging uh, three and a half yards a carry, and they hadn't uh, they hadn't gotten that average in the first couple series. Now they're going to they're going to be back to that that average after these last few plays. Third and one now for Hawaii, and you talked about uh, their numbers on the season not very good. You know, third and one's a different story, and they ran the ball real well the first two times. Let's see what they're doing. They may be in four down territory, and uh, it's going to be close. The sideline judge marks it right about at the marker. That's going to be an interesting spot. Yeah. They loaded up on the right side. Looked to me like they had a double tackle over there. I don't think the Lobos recognized it. Looked like they were blocking four on three on the right side of that offensive line. That was Robert Grant on the carry, one of the second string tailbacks, giving Tharp a rest. Let's see if we can uh, see the hit by Erlach. Yeah, look at all those green shirts over there. Well, see, he submarines the blocker. He takes the blocker on low, and you tell you tell somebody like Brian, you say, when you come up into that line of scrimmage, you got to get lower than the guy you're blocking. And you, and you notice he did that. Now he's six foot three, and he probably got two feet off the ground when he took on that that guard, and he stuffed the play, and that's exactly what he's supposed to do. Looks like they're coming up short. Nope, nope, they're going to make it. No, they're a little short, Mark. No, they're going to make it. Yeah. Oh, goodness. About an inch. Well, from this angle, I thought, thought I saw a little bit of the pole in front of the ball there. There's that head coach chewing on that gum. He's a he's working it, isn't he? Sure is. Fred von Oppen. Let's go isolated here on Oppen as they uh, go for the first down. Well, he's very animated. <laughs> very appreciative of that call. Let's let's keep that in mind for later. This is his uh, first head coaching job. He's was a veteran assistant. Almost coming with the blitz. Jason Purvis comes in there. They get it off, but it's another drop for the Rainbows. The tight end, actually one of the wide receivers, Davey Delora, and that's got to drive a quarterback like Dan Robinson crazy. Well, you've got to give Jason Purvis a little credit on that one. He took a lot of steam off of that ball because he got a hand on Robinson. Watch him come in there. He's going to grab him, and Robinson loses his velocity on the pass, and the pass really came up a little short it didn't quite have that stuff on it when it got to the wide receiver yeah that was 98 not 88 that's uh, Mike Iosua you're doing a great job tonight Mike. <laughs> when I have so time to get you over here three days phonetics. early yeah. get you over here three days early you you learn those I think that's the first one I got right terrific. they ought to do that every game second down 10 Robinson going for the end zone and just off the fingertips of his receiver out there there Ilau Kane and Looked like he might have had it. Well, he could have had it. Uh, Ranty Harper was late from his uh, safety position coming over the top. Ranty should be in there playing center field. And you notice yeah. he's behind them both. Yeah. We're not going to give uh, Kane too much uh, grief for that. That was a good effort. Hey, Robinson is the passing quarterback for Hawaii. They have a running quarterback who's a true freshman, and we may see him tonight. They have another quarterback who's uh, been a little bit banged up in Josh Skinner. Right. And so they really have had they haven't been happy with any. Well, and they've suffered. You know, they've got a little nagging injuries, all, all three of them. Robinson with the shoulder. They're going to try an inside screen. And boy, if New Mexico could have picked that off, instead we see a flag. And by the linesman, I'm not really sure what we've got there. Maybe a hold on New Mexico, but let's check it out. Or maybe we had a lineman downfield. Wouldn't that be his call? That would be. Good job. That's exactly what it is. And got to watch that on those screen passes the linemen have got to go uh, parallel to the line of scrimmage and it's a timing you know where they've got to time it just right when they turn up the field to block and eligible receivers downfield on the offense penalty is declined fourth down well so Hawaii apparently will have to punt this one away I always want to talk through those penalties don't I I'm sorry doggone it <laughs> that's well we know what it was why do we have to hear that guy Tell us what it because was again. That's <laughs> what we do here. Okay. It gives us a break. Okay. <laughs> Chad Smith is back. He has now moved into number two on the all-time UNM return list. We'll get another opportunity here. That's uh, not a very good punt. That will go out of bounds early. 
And uh, Chad, number two, with 621 career punt return yards, has a chance tonight with 20 more yards to become number one. Well, let's keep our fingers crossed for Chad. Hopefully, the Rainbows have to kick a lot, and he gets a chance to make those 20 yards and get in that number one spot. See, on our sister station, catch this. News Radio is now on UPN 50 five nights a week. Catch a full hour of laughs with News Radio, 5.30 weeknights on UPN 50, 6 o'clock as well. Can't go wrong there. Oh, if you miss it at 5.30, you can pick it up again at 6. There you go. This guy's under a lot of heat here right yes, now. He's he only in his third year, but they fired a Look at Rocky somewhat, Long. Yeah. Rocky Long's all over this uh, referee on the sideline. I wonder what for. I don't know whether they thought he didn't give him a very good spot. And they'll give it to the fullback up the middle. I, actually, I thought they had a lot was going to be out near the 20. Instead, it was uh, just on the other side of the 15. And Rocky's way across the field, but he still thinks he had a better look at it than that uh, than that sideline judge. Second down and nine. Fullback didn't go anywhere on that play. He's been running real well. Jared's quite a quite a strong uh, fullback for a freshman. Right now, Holman Wiggins, a true freshman, is in there. Got a couple of youngsters at that position. Watch the option. Lee keeps it. The ball is stripped. Thought he was down. Let's see what the official says. Matt Paul was in there, and, and it looked like, it's like somebody the, got it back. Now there's there. a late flag, Mike. Somebody's doing something. There's a late flag just went up. All right. Brian Johnson made the recovery. Let's see if Graham was down here. No, nice job. Stripping him that time. Again, Matt Paul. Coming in from his inside linebacker position. So they had a stun on, and he stunned right into the play. Yeah, it doesn't seem like uh, Hawaii is too happy, in particular, Paul. And, now this is why we have the officials mic because we don't know what they're going to call and maybe well, there'll be some sort of fancy explanation. Well, I'm not going to say anything this time because I don't know what it was, but when I know what it is. Dead ball, personal foul on the defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic Ooh. first down. Second time for Hawaii with that call, and I did not see it. Gee whiz, that's just terrible. And you, you know, know, this un is. Unless it was uh, some verbal abuse the official took, perhaps? Probably, yeah, probably. Uh, you know, mouthing off, and gee whiz, you know, you know, with all due respect to the Hawaii defense, they did a real good job of stopping the Lobos on two plays, had them in a third and long situation, and now the Lobos are out of the out of the fire with a first down on the, you know, 29-yard line. If you're the head coach over there, you got to be real upset. Thompson, Williams in there, along with Kirk Robbins, and a little bit overthrown, looking for Thompson, and boy, that's. That's a dangerous pass, isn't it, for a middle receiver coming across the middle? Well, that's the uh, that's that's a pass that they'll get you a college scholarship if you can catch that in high school. The coaches like to see those wide receivers come across the middle uh, with a with a head of steam on, catch the ball, and uh, take the hit. They encourage uh, those wide receivers to get in front of that freight train, and if you can do it, you can play college ball. If you can do it in college, you can play pro ball. Kind of stretched him out a little bit on that pass, and he'd have caught it. Second down. Rainbow's coming. Good job by the, the line to pick him up. We're going to have a hold for New Mexico. Lee would get the first down if this thing wasn't going to be brought back, but I'm almost sure that's what it is. Well, that, that official watches two things. He watches, uh, protects the quarterback back there from the late hit, and he watches uh, holding by the backs. Caught one of the backs holding. It was good to see Graham Lee, though, run with authority that time to get out of uh, some danger. And and head downfield. And he's deceptively quick, isn't he? Did oh, you yeah. See, did you see how he uh, got 10 yards before you knew it hit him? And now New Mexico is going to end up back to uh, where they originally were. Well, there you go. You you see, uh, you know, Hawaii suffering on the penalty. Holding on the offense from the spot of the foul, 10-yard penalty, still second down. Now New Mexico is going to suffer on the penalty. Uh, so, you know, what's fair is fair, and Hawaii has now got New Mexico right back where they were before the 15-yard penalty. Wow, well, that's marked off uh, where the spot of the foul, so it goes way back there. Way back. And Second and forever. You might have been able to see it across the middle of your screen there. Second down and 28. Man in motion, and again, Brian Johnson jumps. The tight end has had all sorts of problems here tonight, and they'll have to move it back another two and a half yards or so. Well, you can't say that it's a... Yeah, 
you can't say that uh, Brian can't hear the snap count because there's uh, we got a 50,000 seat stadium with about 20,000 people here. It's not overly loud. This is just a mental error, and it's you know he's he's got to overcome that. There's Rocky Long. He's not excited. Well, and New Mexico is not nearly deep enough at tight end to bring anybody else in. And frankly, Brian jo Brian Johnson has been outstanding this year. Jared Baxter is the fullback. Almost trying to spread him out. Lee will keep it and just gets out of the end zone. Houdini Jackson and for Graham Lee, no chance to pull a Houdini there and get out of trouble. Well, Hawaii is looking for that uh, touchback. And, uh, Graham did get out of there. You know, Graham's a senior quarterback. He's got to be able to throw that ball out of bounds and not take that sack. Yeah, he didn't have much of a chance that time. Well, now it's you said it was third and forever a little while ago. It's third and forever. Two. Officially, it's third and 37. Jonathan Burrow comes in at tight end. Well, you're not gonna you're not gonna leave a kid in there that's that's jumped off sides three well, four times. I think he's on the other side. They're going with a two tight end set. Strange play there, and again, it's they may have a penalty on New Mexico, and I think they took too much time. Move it back about to two or three inches. Well, it's third down again. I'll tell you what. I almost, uh, I'd almost go deep into the playbook and get out the uh, quick, quick kick. Quick kick, yeah. We can't seem to hike the ball. We can't seem to stay on sides here. The Lobos just plague penalty after penalty on this series. Now let's see if they can get a little room out here. There's a lot of room over the right tackle. Going deep. And nobody there looking for Germany Thompson. That play was really dead from the get go. And, and I don't know whether he, I think he threw it away. Do you, do you think he was really thrown to Germany? Yeah, didn't look like Germany it. Germany wasn't anywhere near that play. And now Jason Bloom, who has had two punts blocked this year, averaging about 42 yards of boot, is, is back. And Charles Starp is standing uh, on the Hawaii helmet at about the 50 yard line. Again, if he steps out of Jason's the end zone, got to that keep is a it up there. Yes. You need a good snap here. Not a good one. Gets it away, and Tharp's going to have a lot of running room, but he didn't get up there to catch it. Now he's got it. Taking his time, dancing around, going down the sidelines, and dropped it to 30. Now that could have been a big play. It was still pretty good for the Rainbows. Well, and that's the original line of scrimmage where the Lobos had the ball before all of those penalties. They were penalized 28 yards, Mike. And they'd have been penalized more if they hadn't been half the distance to the goal penalties there at the end. They might have been they might have been penalized 50 yards. Well, the Lobos are well behind in this series. They trail it 14 to 6, but they've won three in a row. They've won the last three. Yeah, back here in 1994, Lobos came in 0 and 5. Won their first game of the season and ended up kind of salvaging the season. Well, they did salvage the season. That was uh, that was the uh, third season for the then uh, rookie coach Dennis Franchoni, and the, that was kind of a turnaround season. Wesley Morris went through his hands, and, and I'll tell you, uh, McDavid hit him in the hands too as it went through, but didn't really have much of a chance to intercept there. Well, they haven't been going to the other side. It always seems to be McDavid. And McDavid up till up till now has been the, the best coverer. You know, Walters, Walter Bernard has been the cornerback everybody's picked on and had success against. It's very interesting that they didn't pick up on that and watching their films. They feel that they can go to, to Marcus and, and make it happen. Now Walter Bernard has grown here in the last month of the season. Robinson again has time going for the end zone, has his man off Excellent. his arm. Looking again for Wesley Morris and it hit him kind of on the shoulder. Well, no, Marcus McDavid made an exceptional play. He was uh, he took an angle to the ball once the ball was thrown, and you teach him go to the ball and he's making his move right here to the ball, throws his hand up, and gets in the way. That was a that was a real nice play. He had been beat and he got back into the play, caused some damage, caused that receiver to take his eye off the ball. I don't know. Got to make that catch. Morris, a guy with 30 catches this year and one touchdown, but. Coming into the game anyway. Marcus is breathing a big sigh of relief there because he uh, he was beat. 
play clock is down to five. Hawaii is going to have to take a timeout here unless they can get it off. Have to hurry. That should have been a penalty, and they, they're going to give them one on this. And that's going to be a first down. The clock had hit zero well before the ball would snap, but they got it to Carter. The officials missed one. I, uh, I was staring at it as you, as you mentioned it, and it definitely had gotten to zero. So, well, we're, we are in Hawaii. And it does say rainbows on the field, so those things happen to you on the road, Mike. Kenny Lewis comes out of the game and they'll bring in another down lineman. Randall Price comes in. They're exchanging the linebacker for the D lineman. Same situation. Shot or shot clock. The uh, play clock is down to eight. First down play. Tharp. Oh, great tackle. Nicely done by Mike Barnett. Mike came in and uh, actually lost his outside leverage and made an exceptional oh, play. On that, well, he you? swept him real nice with his arm, but they're not supposed to. He's not supposed to be making the tackle inside out. He's supposed to be making that outside in. Mike Barnett, the sophomore from Glendora, California, and Hawaii's numbers uh, in the red zone been a little bit pathetic this year. Just two touchdowns and 12 tries. Three field goals. Looking for the running back out of the backfield, and that should be a fumble. Zoller picks it back up, and Hawaii gets a break there. What a heads up play by Zoller. Uh, we've got, you've got the Lobos pressuring the quarterback. He releases the ball a little early. Zoller takes the ball, loses it on the fumble. It bounces right back up to him, and uh, he tries to make a play with it. Here it goes. Back up, nice play, puts his hand down. What a scrappy player. Well, I'll tell you, Darrell Moat put a hit on him, the high school freshman. Little Darrell. Zoller's a good sized kid. Darrell came up there with authority, didn't he? Yeah, Zoller's 250 pounds. Moat with 190. Yeah, he says he's 190. <laughs> Third down play for the Rainbow Warriors. Fifth out. Good enough for the first down. Still no pressure. Still absolutely no pressure on the rainbow quarterback. Robinson's a good enough quarterback, Mike. He'll throw it on you if you don't press him. David Delora gets the first down, and Hawaii will try to punch it in when we come back. Lobo football, brought to you in part by the new Dodge. See the friendly... Why, as we get ready to start the second quarter, 3-0 here from Honolulu. And Fred Van Oppen has his team down inside the 10-yard line. First and goal at the seven. Well, and the opponents have scored 24 times out of 27 times in the red zone against the Lobos. So this will be a real test for the defense right here. Hawaii, strong side right. Up the middle. Short game that time. That's Avion Weaver, number 20, seeing his first action tonight. Antoine Wright got in there, Mike, and made the tackle at the line of scrimmage. I don't know where the nose tackle was, and we got strong safety making the tackle in there tight like that. Well, I'm glad you mentioned Antoine Wright. He uh, was the WAC Player of the Week on defense when these teams played back in 1995 in Albuquerque. So his his career has it seems like it's it's been a long haul for him. I think he was a freshman then. Wasn't yes, he? he was. Second and goal, just inside the five. Hawaii does not have a rushing touchdown this year. Going for the end zone and just overthrown. Intended that time for Carter, but the Lobos had it covered. Nicely done on the far side. Excellent defense by the Lobos, putting a lot of pressure from the right end, right linebacker position. I think Ranty Harper may have, may have even been in there. He saw white shirts all over the quarterback. He released the ball. Now, in the past, New Mexico has been called for interference on that, but I think uh, it's a good job by McDavid. And Carter wanted it. Boy, he's nailed that time. All right, here goes. Third down. Zoller, the fullback. They're going to try to pass for him. Up the middle, pressure incomplete. Great job up the middle by New Mexico. 52, Henry Stevens. Yeah. Sophomore. Defensive end, stunning inside. Got pressure on. You put a helmet on that quarterback right under his uh, his shoulder pads, and he's not going to throw the ball well. 
So Chad Shrout will come in. Leanna Bronson, the backup quarterback, is the holder. Shroud has, has struggled three of nine on field goals, but he probably hasn't had one this close. And he missed it. He missed it. Wide right. I'm looking into the booth here, and the Hawaii coaches are just have their heads in their hands, Mike. Well, they have scored 13 points total in the first half this year. Lobo football. He's UPN's newest sci-fi drama. Wednesdays at 7. Then stay tuned for exciting new adventures on Star Trek Voyager. That's Wednesdays at 8, only on UPN 50. Very unfortunate for the Rainbows on that last series. There was, they were smelling that goal line, Mike, and that came away empty. Moved it inside the 5, missed the field goal. Up the middle, Baxter pushing forward, carries a couple of, well, maybe more than a couple of Rainbow Warriors with him. He cut that all on his own. He was hit right at yeah. the line of scrimmage. He's a strong kid. I was talking with the coaches the other day, and they said, uh, "This time next season, you're gonna you're gonna think about Chris Shelton, look at him in the same light that you did Chris Shelton." Yeah. They say he's just as physical. All he needs is a little maturing. Stephen Gonzalez made the tackle, at least assisted on it. Second down. They're calling it five. So nicely done by Jared Baxter. He goes in motion right now. Little pitch, Reginald Johnson. And the little guy's brought down after a gain of one. Again, Gonzalez is there. Well, Reginald came at, came right, and you notice Jared Baxter was the fullback in motion. He was coming out back blocking to the left, and I think Reginald thought he saw something over on the right side of the line, and Jared put a good block on that tackle. There was some room on the left. Well, one of the things about being a good running back is being patient. And that's something that's hard to do because you, you want to get excited, you want to get there, but sometimes patience is a virtue as a running back. Reginald is so quick, he wants to get there fast. Snap got there a little late. Graham Lee overthrows his man. Looking for Tyler Fenwick and uh, missed him that time. He did get some pressure up the middle. Javon Giles was there on the coverage. Martinez Williams was uh, in man to man coverage out at the right split end and Martinez is looking at Graham he was wide open as Graham looked up the field Martinez was had beaten his man and was wide open out on the wing. Well that play had bad timing from the get go because Graham Lee started to move back thought the snap was going to come a little bit earlier and, and uh, couldn't recover from that fourth down Bloom is back in again. You know Mike this one two three kick is a, is, is a pattern here with this Lobo offense and it's a pattern that gets that defense in trouble. Another great punt by Bloom. Clark feels it at the 23. Down the sidelines, and he's brought out of bounds by Thompson. And what do we got here? Fans thought there should have been a little bit of roughing on the sidelines, but no flag, and everything seems to be called. Well, Germany kind of bulldogged him. He got him by the nap of his jersey and kind of did the old uh, Dick Dixie shuffle with him, threw him out of bounds. 12.38 to go, second quarter. Lobos lead by three. Billy Bruner and Deanna Sassetta bring you the region's first early evening newscast with first at 4.30. If you've grown tired of the talk shows, then get the day's news plus medical news with Dr. Dina Dell, smart woman reports plus the weather from your region. First at 4.30, weekday afternoons right here. Lobos up 3-0, but Hawaii with very good field position. As they try to uh, amend... Make amends for that last drive. Charles Tharp again driving it up the middle. Gain of a couple maybe. But once again, Mike, the Lobo offense three and out and gives the uh, puts the defense in the hole by giving the ball up to the uh, Rainbow offense on a 45-yard line. Uh, this is what's happened over and over again. The offense cannot control the ball, can't keep the defense off the field, and has been giving up the ball uh, to the other team with good field position. Well, one of the problems for the Hawaii offense this year is that their the actually for their defense this year is that their offense hasn't been able to sustain any drives and, and the, we may see a similar situation for New Mexico tonight. there's a swing pass Mike Barnett with the tackle of Barb and it'll bring up a third down now for Hawaii once again the uh, Hawaii rainbow offensive linemen and backs have done an exceptional job of picking up the Lobo blitz the Lobos had seven men on the play that time and could not get pressure and that was supposed to be the strength. Oh, that was Lewis over there, not Barnett. Uh, Kenny Lewis makes the tackle. My apologies well, there. Well, and Kenny Lewis isn't going to win a foot race with Mr. Tharp. 
you've got to get some pressure on that quarterback. He can throw to Tharp all day long in the short outside. Second and two. Option, he is nailed, balls on the ground, and Hawaii gets it back. Jason Purvis put a hurting on him, and Tharp managed to jump on the ball, but Jason doing a nice job here. Two sacks on the season. The junior from Mission Viejo, California. Well, Jason is a big, huge football player, and he stunted right into the gap, and that's a situation where the Lobo defense was calling for a stunt, and that stunt worked in face of the rainbow offensive play that was called. Just a, it's that chess match, and Lobos win that one. Purvis may have become the most consistent D lineman for the Lobos this season. He's a pleasant surprise. You know, he came out of two a days and uh, out of nowhere, oh, snap, yeah. won his spot. A big punt. Smith will take it inside the 10, trying to find the corner. Now he's going to go upfield and he's hit hard. A couple of yards on that return, and the Lobos find themselves in another hole. That's going to be a real hard way for Chad to uh, overtake number one <laughs> two yards at a time and getting hit as hard as he did. He's so gutsy. He just sticks his head in there and drives. And, and uh, he, he's going to be, before it's all over, sure. the number one punt returner. All right. Well, let me ask you this. I know the coaches are talking to him down there, and I think that's Jeff Conway, the special teams coach. Should he have let that one go inside the five? Normally, you don't make that return. That's a good observation, yeah. Mike. Color man's supposed to make that observation. Well, Sorry. It was it was one of those deals where the ball kept sailing, I think, and he may have lost track of where he was exactly. I'm sitting here hoping he makes that 20 yards, and I didn't see that. Across the middle, Johnson drops. Tough night for Brian Johnson. Poor Brian. I, he's got to feel terrible after jumping off sides uh, 25 times in the first quarter and then dropping wow. a pass. And you notice that the um, the Rainbows were in their prevent defense. They were only rushing three on that. So uh, it was a good job of, of Graham getting in the ball in the open. They had eight D backs dropping back on that play. And uh, you know he would have had six, seven yards. Tough had night for Graham Lee. Three of 23 uh, of nine, 28 yards. Trying to get it going there. Thompson with it. They'll say he was up. Mike? Yeah. Was like in it. the air? Yeah. That's Quincy LeJay over there on the coverage, number 27, with a couple of intersection, uh, interceptions this year. Uh, Quincy's got three. Let's see. He come, he's pushed out of bounds there. You're supposed to give him a direct drop. It's like in golf. You get to drop the ball straight down. When he's in the air, he's supposed to get to drop straight down. Right. I think the ruling may have been that he, no matter what he was going to carry his momentum was going to carry about anyway. Yes. Sir. That was good physics on the part of the ref, huh? Third down. It's a quick calculation. Straight back, Lee. Behind his intended receiver, Jay Johnson, and now New Mexico will have to punt it away. Johnson cut in. Lee apparently thought he was going to cut out. Well, you know, that's been something that's uh, been been a real tough thing for Graham to do this season is uh, throw the ball to where wide receivers are. Now, in the beginning of the season, the wide receivers were making a decision based on the position of the defensive back. I've been told that the, that the offense they're running now is predetermined play, so Graham should know where his wide receiver is going to be. That shouldn't be happening as much as it did the first four games. Well, the Lobos are losing the battle for field position. They backed up pretty, pretty far in that end zone again. It's been a regular occurrence. Not as good that time by Bloom. Tharp lets it go There's through a break. his hand. There's a break. Gets it back. And Thompson brings him down again. So credit Germany Thompson, the starting wide receiver, for making a couple of special teams tackles. Well, that's a, that's a something that the uh, that the Lobo special teams guys did a couple weeks ago. They said, we got to get our best athletes in on special teams. There is a flag on the field back at about the 15. And it will go against Hawaii. An illegal push, apparently. Well, the Lobo offense uh, gets lucky on this. They're, Hawaii's going to have its worst field position of the night thanks to a, a flubbed punt return and a penalty. I think uh, Tharp was counting off how many yards he was going to make on that punt return and forgot to catch the ball. But that was kind of an odd punt to, to bring in. Actually, it was a it was a poor punt. Uh, no hang time on it. Was pretty much a line drive. Uh, the Lobos really dodged the bullet there because uh, Tharp's a, you know, averaging 15 yards a carry. He took that ball in about the 35-yard line. On the receiving team, it's a post scrimmage kick violation, 10-yard penalty from the end of the kick. First down. 
Yeah. A 44-yard punt by, by Bloom. Well, this game may just uh, be decided by which team makes one less mistake than the other. Both teams are are jumping off sides, holding yeah. uh, illegal procedure, and uh, I think it's going to come down, let's just watch it, but I think it's going to come down to which team uh, makes 14 penalties and the other team makes 15, and that's how your winner is going to be determined. Well, that's why Hawaii is 0-6 and New Mexico is on a five-game losing streak. It's been those mistakes. Numbers for Robinson. Twin backs this time. And fumble, ball's on the ground. Let's see if New Mexico comes out of there. That's KJ Friday, and it is New Mexico's ball. There's a fumble. That's what the Lobos need to do is create a turnover. They've got five turnovers in the last two games, Mike. They didn't have but three turnovers in the first uh, five games. Afatia Thompson, his first carry of the night, and he dropped it. And let's see if it's Erlacher that knocked it out of there. Brian's about to get clipped there. Oh. Look at him reach in and grab it. Put the helmet right on the ball. Put the helmet on the ball. Put that big meat hook of an arm he's got up there and just stripped it. And so the field possession battle is all of a sudden uh, in New Mexico's favor. Well, the, the offense got a break there. Yep. Defense helped him out. Well, the Lobo offense has put up almost 1,000 yards of offense in the past two games. Tonight, not much. Gordon cutting back. And again, he's got that broken hand. He picks up five, six yards before he's brought down by Steven Gonzalez. That broken hand really isn't a factor, Mike. I was talking to him before the game. They're putting a soft cast on. He'd been working out all week with a hard cast, and he was even catching the ball with a hard cast. So this soft cast, he probably feels real good. He said, um, we'll take a couple Tylenol, put that soft cast on, I'll be fine. And you know, since they let Lennox run the ball more on offense, the offense has been more productive. I think one of the reasons is Lennox Gordon's output. Yeah. He's been good. Hasn't really had a chance to break one this year. He's been complaining about that. Has the ball. Sliding through. First down and more. He sure runs with authority. Wow. You know, there's a there's a movement afoot and you know to, to let all the backs touch the ball the same number of times in a game. And I'm telling you, the more Lennox the more Lennox touches the ball, the more I like it. Look at him get through yeah. there. This is our Frost Mortgage replay tonight. And a good look at that from our end zone camera. Now they're bringing him out, see? There's Trooper Taylor, head coach. He brings him out. He gets a couple now touches. Now, you don't like that, though. I don't like that. Yeah. I, I think, you sh I think you, he can carry the ball 25, 30 times a game. He seems to get better. He's been the most consistent of the running backs. Deion Marion now the tailback. Option. Bramley has some room. Fakes. Going for the corner. Touchdown, New Mexico. Boy, that was a nice play by Graham, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yes. He had them all. There's a... There's a couple, we used to say, there's a couple of jog straps on the field out there. He put about three moves on three different people as he went around the corner, had them all standing still. Excellent run. Here it comes here. There's one. There's another. Woo! Good little fake. Deked his man, uh, Quincy. Look at him accelerate. Yeah. Look at him accelerate. He is deceptively quick. Even faster on the replay there for a moment. A good block downfield. I don't know if that was Kirk Robbins. I believe it was. Kirk's that little bitty wide receiver from Artesian. He's just as scrappy as can be. Bloom kicks it through, and New Mexico has extended its lead. Lobos now up 10-0 on the Rainbows. Let's see how the defense does in just a moment. Lobo lead is now 10 after the short Graham Lee touchdown run. 10-0 midway through the second quarter, almost midway through. Glad you're with us. Hope you're staying up late to join the game. Don't forget to turn your clocks back this That's morning. Right, tonight's the yeah. night. Yeah. yeah, so go ahead and watch the rest of the game, Absolutely. everybody. You're going to get to sleep in another hour. You bet. Bloom boots it, squibs it. Fred Lau with it. Has some room. Steven personally misses the tackle, going to midfield, and he's brought down by one of the New Mexico front men there, Scott Gerhardt, one of the backup nickel backs out of Oklahoma City. Well, there's that 25-yard return, Mike. And that's off a squib kick. That's not supposed to happen. Lobos have got to stay in their lanes, have got to cover, and they've got to tackle. And they didn't get it done that time. That back outplayed them. Hawaii with decent field position now at the 37, 38-yard line. Mm -hmm. 
Short drop, batted down. New Mexico with the big hands up there is Casey Tisdale, the junior from San Diego. Casey was applying pressure from the outside. He was actually on the blitz, and he did a good job of settling up and getting up in the air as the quarterback's arm came forward, made a great play there. Puts a well, it's like this right defense there. is now starting to make some things happen. They've had a nice night so far and have been put in a hole a little bit by the offense, but they've come up with the big plays. Well, they've responded. They sure have. There's that stand-up nose tackle situation. See that's, it out that's there? That's a weird look, isn't it? It sure is. Going down the sidelines, and it's picked off. No, oh. and dropped. Good effort over there by Marcus McDavid, who had it momentarily, and then he hit the turf and it went flying out. Marcus had such good position on that play, it looked as if the ball was going to Marcus. He looks like the wide receiver. If you didn't know why it was on offense there, you'd swear Marcus was the wide out. It was really forced by the by the ground, the artificial turf, and, but apparently didn't have it long enough to be an interception, but nice job. So far tonight, Robinson, 6 of 18, 43 yards. The crowd has gotten quiet here. And just two down linemen in stance, and everybody else is standing up and juking around him. Straight drop, Antoine Wright forcing him. Steps up, has a man wide open. Carter's caught for the first down. All of that action and no pressure. No real pressure. Everybody's running and blitzing and going to areas, and that offensive line of the Rainbows is picking them up, doing a fine job of blocking. He had all day long to throw that ball. Well, Erlacher came over late, but I'm reasonably sure that wasn't his man over there. Erlacher saw the quarterback get a, get, a, get a little bit of pressure early, and he was going to come mop it up. But there, you can't cover man-to-man -man all night. You've got to be able to get some pressure on the quarterback so the quarterback's forced to throw the ball. Marcus and uh, Walter sitting out there on uh, islands all by themselves. And you cannot cover man-to-man -man and give the guy five seconds to throw the ball. 8.30 and counting left first half. Up the middle, more pressure. They get rid of it. Complete to Wesley. And not very good tackling that time by New Mexico. And that will allow uh, Wesley Morris to get the first down. Now, they, Bill Borchers took a four-yard run at that quarterback. He went over the, uh, the right guard and the offensive line picked him up building go anywhere well let's and he talk had a four about yard head start let's talk about the the disadvantages of, of that type of style I mean do you kind of give yourself away a little bit which way you're going well I think what's happening is especially on passing plays the rainbow linemen are getting up into their pass blocking set because there's nobody in front of them they're getting up quick time to react get some time to react you see him coming yes. another first down across the middle no. Looking for Clark, overthrew him by just a little. That's got to be a perfect pass. Clark was trying to split two, two Lobo D-backs on that. The ball's not perfectly thrown. It's intercepted, or in that case, overthrown. Well, they're going for the big pass play here on this drive, and uh, well, they put themselves in a little bit of a bind here with second and 10. No better than they'd been running other than a couple of running plays they ran early in the second quarter. A, a pass is as good as a run, and they've they've had some success blocking the Lobo linemen, so why not throw the ball? All right. Three wide receivers. Give it to the fullback up the middle. Breaks a tackle and gets almost to the first down marker. Brian Erlacher brought him down. But that time, Weaver, I believe it was Weaver, Yes, it was. Uh, broke free at about the line of scrimmage. Let's see who missed it. There's Jason Purvis arm tackling. Doesn't wrap him. And uh, that's, a, that's a mortal sin for the defensive end, not to wrap that back. And uh, he was there. You see, the, the defense is putting the, the personnel in the right spot. You, you've got to perform once you get to the right spot. Jason Third didn't down. get the tackle. Move. Third down about six inches. And Robinson will keep it. Does a nice job getting the first down, and some tempers are flaring down there. Bill Borcher is kind of pushing down the offensive lineman for Hawaii, more than pushing him down, shoving him. Now, Bill wants to be a professional wrestler after his college eligibility is up, and he's uh, getting a little practice there after the after the whistle. He's got a little bit of that mentality. Bill's a Bill's a hard-nosed football player. He's a back inside at tackle tonight. He has not enjoyed much success in in in, uh, in pressuring the quarterback. But, you know, they, they block, they probably blocking Bill with two or three people. Who's that effect? There he's right over the center now, see? 
Weaver is the lone setback, the fullback up the middle. Good surge that time before he is brought down and a smattering of applause here. Kenny Lewis down there in the bottom of that pile. The only Lobo ever to play in two bowl games. Played in one for Texas and then played for New Mexico last year in the Insight.com Bowl. Well, Kenny's back and he's healthy. And Those he's most linebackers, there's so few now that they have to go a lot of plays. We used to, uh, the Lobos used to play eight linebackers and they're playing four tonight. Big play here. Then Weaver, number 20, the fullback. Robinson looks deep, being pressured, hit from behind. No whistle. Let's see, is it an incomplete pass? Finally, the referee says it is. I think that's the right call. It just came awful late. Well, I believe his, his forward motion, his arm was going forward, and he's still down on the ground, and his helmet's off. He has had shoulder problems. Coaches over here in the booth are very concerned. Yes, that's, they're telling him to stay down. It's his right shoulder, Mike. He tried to put some pressure on it right there and didn't get it done. Let's see if it's Henry Stevens coming in. Or someone coming off the wing with a full head of steam. Jeff McRae. Boy, yeah. I got him right under the arm. Well, and Jeff is, uh, they've, they're going to line Jeff up outside the tackle and they're going to let Jeff come tonight. They indicated that, uh, that Jeff was going to be their blitz man. Took a big hit. Yeah. He tried to give a little pep talk to his uh, offense as he went off the field. You see that? Yeah. Game kid. Freshman Bronson Liana comes in now. He is the running quarterback. Not a very good passer, so let's see what Hawaii decides to do here. That always scares me, Mike. I remember when BYU brought a freshman quarterback in one time named Gifford Niels. <laughs> he just he ran, said, oh, good, ran, we got a freshman here. Ran, ran and passed and beat the Lobos nine ways to Friday. The crowd here likes him. He's a, a local player. Go up the middle to the fullback, and it was kind of a give-up play there to uh, Zeller. Don't you think? I mean, that wasn't exactly the most creative, and maybe they didn't have much of it, many options there. Well, they're not going to put that quarterback in a position to make a mistake. First thing you want to do when you get a new quarterback in, let him hand off to the fullback. And that's a good play by the coach. You know, they're going to get three points here if their kicker can... Uh, can put it through and you you, uh, you don't put your quarterback in a position where you can give up the ball. He missed the last one from 21. This will be about a 25 yard whistle and uh, even before we get set up here let's see what it was. Does New Mexico have too many men on the field? Looks like there's a bunch of them Just and that's one. exactly what it well, is. Well it's only one Mike. Just one extra guy. Substitution infraction on the defense is a five yard penalty, 12 men on the field. That's Randall Price who came out and. Well, you know, Randall's playing two or three positions out there and that's got to get a little confusing. Uh, but you're supposed to know, uh, you're supposed to know when you're out there and when you're not out there. And uh, you know, this is a special team. Okay, this is the uh, field goal team. Uh, here, here's what Rocky's saying. He says, how can you call this before you even snap the ball? Apparently Rocky is satisfied with the explanation. Oh, I didn't get satisfied. <laughs> well, he didn't say anything back to him. All right, so this will move the ball closer. If you're thinking about going for it on fourth down, now maybe you have a little bit more of an impetus, but I still think they'll kick it. They're thinking about it. Yeah. Van Apple's talking to somebody. At the distance to the goal, that leaves the ball about a half a yard short. I believe he means of the first down marker, which I thought was kind of a weird explanation. Half a yard short of what? Is he trying to... Uh, Half a yard short of paradise? <laughs> well, let's see what we've got now. Looks like Hawaii is going to go for it. Guy and Dan Robinson comes back in. Now let's watch out for this uh, spotter we've got working for us. This big kid over here gets very excited when Hawaii does something good. So if they happen to get the first down, you better be careful. You're in between two big guys here. <laughs> I'll be flailing my arms because I'll be upset and he's going to be jumping on you because he's excited. All right, fourth down and about one. Robinson, the quarterback, to Tharp. He's hit hard and gets the first down, I believe. It'll be very close. He was hitting the backfield and made a nice spin move. This, this is going to be very close, though. Very close. 
They he's, seem to think they've got, he got it. it. He's saying he got it. I'd say I got it too if I was him. Well, let's we'll get a measurement here. And Antoine Wright hit him very early. I'm looking across the field at the mark, and the mark's right at the two yard line, and he's not at the two yard line with that ball. Nope. I'm going to say they didn't get it. That's what I would say. Here. I'm going to say they didn't get it. Then the fans here will boo the coach for going for yeah, it. Big boo. Big boo coming. Let's see it. Lobos have held. I thought with that great effort by Tharp that he would have gotten it by half a yard or so. He, he did everything he could. I'll tell you, he got hit in the backfield. And I thought he had it at first till I saw the ball marked. Let's give Antoine Wright a lot of credit there. The senior from Wichita Falls, Texas. He's already got his degree in accounting. Going for a master's degree and he's out here playing. Well, you, there's the offensive coordinator for Hawaii and you can see our lovely Hawaiian see my, shirts. See right my Hawaiian there. shirt right there? I'm right next to him. He's pounding the desk. He's making too much noise over there really if you want to know the truth. We're trying to broadcast over here, buddy. Don Lindsay was the defensive coordinator last year. He shifted to the offense. And it's one of many changes they have had here. Lee will try to pass out of the end zone. It gets, his, gets it to his man. It'll be short of the first down, but Germany Thompson will give the Lobos a little bit of room over there. Well, once again, they go back to that big, tall, strong, heavy, wide receiver with the possession reception. Say, here, catch the ball and drag that 175-pound cornerback down the field, which is exactly what he did. That's the nuts and bolts of the West Coast offense. And when you're playing catch out there, it works. I well, haven't really seen Martinez Williams much here tonight. They're doubling on Martinez. You probably won't. Two tight ends. Thompson in motion. Second down play. A little toss and a whistle beforehand. What do we have now? Martinez had 14 catches for five TDs in the last two games. So they're double covering him, which is going to leave Germany and the other wide out, possibly the tight end, open. So I think you, the Lobos will address Fire to the that. Snap. Ball start on the offense, half the distance to the goal, still second down. Well, that has been a recurring theme in already New Mexico with seven penalties. That is an eight and a half yard penalty. That's and that's and you know it's it's the uh, it's the uh, it's those kind of things that just stop an offense. Here you've got a second and two and a half, and now you've got a first and a second twelve, and eight. Or second and twelve, and it's just terrible. Lee changing the play at the line of scrimmage. Moving guys around. Lots of time on the play clock. Short drop. Quick pass. And it'll be a little bit shy of the first down marker. And was that Germany again? I'm not sure if it was. No, in fact, it was uh, Martinez Williams. Was Martinez. Yeah. They got him in single coverage out there. That was a nice slant pattern. That pattern's very hard to, uh, very hard to defend. And uh, when you're just stepping and throwing in your catch, now there's two nice receptions, two nice passes in a row. If we can just keep the penalties out of the game, the Lobos can move the ball on, on the rainbows. Third in the yard, four minutes to go, first half of play. Lobos lead 10 0. Two tight ends up the middle. And that surge should be good enough for the first down. Dion Marion hopping in there, and the Lobos will move the yard markers. Well, the, uh, the Rainbows ended up with about eight men on the line of scrimmage after they finished their stunning. That's a, it's effectively a goal line defense, and that they got into it real strong there. It was, it was a, a real good effort on Dion's part to get pick up that first down. This is the Lobos' first game on artificial turf this season. Had a couple games last year at UTEP and then in the uh, WAC championship game in Las Vegas. They're not really used to that. They're wearing these shoes for the first time, tried to get used to the turf on a Thursday and then again yesterday. Brought him out two days to get used to it. Normally get one. Little pass, little quick pitch back to uh, Lennox Gordon. Nice little reverse pivot, quick pitch, man blocking on the line of scrimmage, and they're letting Lennox just take a full speed run at that line of scrimmage and go to the open space. He's pretty good at that, too. Sat with uh, Lennox a little bit in the uh, LA airport and he said, You know, everybody's been calling saying I'm from Gilbert, Arizona all these four years I've been here. I'm from Mesa. I don't know where that started. The media guide says it. Everything else says it. We stand corrected. Mesa, Arizona. Lennox Gordon. Kirk Robbins in motion. There's the young man from Mesa surging forward. 
and getting another first down for New Mexico. That'll stop the clock momentarily with 2.46 to go in the half. Well, Jim Fenwick has come back with his opening offensive scheme, which was a double tight end power scheme. He's going to run the ball between the tackles, little option, and he's going to see, he's going to try to get the uh, rainbows out of that stunning defense. Toyote made the tackle for Hawaii. Again, another first down. The clock is moving again. Rocky Long would love to put this five game losing streak behind him. Wide receivers Thompson and Martinez. Fake inside blitz is uh, picked up and that one is thrown high in the air. And Quincy LeJay made kind of an awkward move to intercept it but uh, didn't really even come that close. Well the ball was so poorly thrown in relationship to where the receiver was that the uh, Quincy was out of the play just like the receiver he couldn't believe it was there. Not exactly the, the best route in the world and, and see, it's those type of things where I come to the defense a little bit of Graham. I mean it looks like a terrible pass but it's hard to tell where the receiver was going based on. It. Well and, and supposedly those uh, those uh, wide receiver reads off the of deep back are out of the playbook so I, I tend to think the wide receiver didn't run his power. Second down and ten. Short yardage play by uh, Gordon again, and he's brought down by Garner. Miles Garner from San Jose, a sophomore. Looks big, doesn't he? He is. 6'2, 330 pounds. Well, that's a whole lot of football play yeah. there. Hard to move him out. You're Jared Baxter, you're about 210 pound fullback, and you get the assignment to block him. <laughs> Gordon comes out of the game. Marion is in. Third down play. Lee now decides to change things with four seconds left, and he may need to waste a timeout here. Gets it off. Quick pass. Has his man. And that'll be a little bit short of the first down. Germany Thompson hauls it in, but he's about a foot or two shy. Let's see what the and Germany do. comes up limping there. Excuse me, Greg. He took a big hit. He took a real big hit on this watching. Here's our frost mortgage replay, and it's maybe one of those turf injuries a little bit right there. And Thompson is really, really limping as he goes to the sidelines. Coaches next door to us are saying, watch the fake. Watch the fake. We don't fake. We take a long count and try to draw them off sides. Well, they they, last week. they did that successfully against San Diego State. Bloom gets There's it out of the there. Jason Bloom punt. Yep, nice and high. Tharp will take it at the 27. No fair catch for him. And he gains about five yards on that play. Well, two missed tackles later. We, yeah. the, you know, the Lobos get a man up there in his face. 43 seconds left to go. First tap. Glad you're staying up late with us. We do appreciate it. Mike Powers along with Greg Frost. Team will return uh, tomorrow morning. Sometimes they've tried to catch that uh, red eye fly flight back and get into Albuquerque 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock in the morning, but. They'll be leaving the islands tomorrow and get in about 11 p.m. tomorrow night. Or I guess now in Albuquerque it is in the rest of uh, the southwest. It's now Sunday morning. Is it uh, not, not yet? Not yet. No, 15 no? more minutes. 15 more minutes. Yeah. Don't 40? rush. Don't rush. <laughs> I was getting sleepy just listening to you talk about the time. <laughs> Bronson Leonic back in with the pitch. To Tharp. Erlacher is there to wrestle him down. He would have made a pretty good cowboy, Brian Erlacher. Well, Brian's you know? from Lovington, you know, and I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he hadn't bulldogged a bull or two as a young high school kid. Lennox Gordon is now the ninth Lobo with 2,000 career rushing yards, right at 2,005. Lennox is going to pass David Booker and a couple guys. He's going to move up. He'll be one of the top five rushers ever at the University of New Mexico before he's done. Clock is winding down here. No sense of urgency from Hawaii. Fans not very thrilled about that. Now he's going to run it and he's going to go down. Pressured by uh, several New Mexico Lobos. The official goes down and you're going to hear some boos here as the first half comes to an end with Hawaii whimpering in a little bit to the locker room. New Mexico leading Hawaii at halftime. 10 nothing our score. Stay with us for a news update. We'll have that for you right after this. Update is brought to you by your local New Mexico Jeep dealer. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this special. 
Lobos are not very effective on third down. Hawaii about uh, 50 percent there. Fourth down. And uh, you, you can't ask much more than a shutout. Well, you can't <laughs> ask much more than a shutout. But what they're going to need to do in the second half is get more pressure on the quarterback. They have not done a good job of pressure quarterback. A couple of isolated pressure situations, but nothing, not, not anywhere near where they want it to be. Okay, the Lobos will get the ball to start the second half. We'll have that for you. Lobos trying to protect a 10-zip lead. Uh, will receive to start things off. Rocky Long here. Again, first year as head coach. 48 years old, a native of California. Former Lobo quarterback. People forget, I think, a little bit that he played professionally up in the Canadian Football League and has had a long, uh, distinguished career as a player. Long, distinguished career. He's all conference up there a couple of years. Had a good career. Played defense. Yeah. Went from quarterback at UNM and converted to a defensive safety. All right. Lobo's first chance here to return a kickoff. At the three. Trying to get into the wedge. And does. Fans here wanted a clip. No flag and a little bit of a scuffle going on out there. Stafford and somebody else. And that was Reginald Johnson bringing it back out past the 20 yard line. And that's where New Mexico will start. Going to get it about the 25. So this is decent field position. Now the, now the key will be. Can the offense run four or five plays without jumping off sides and without uh, negating a first down play? Well, after two big games in a, grow, uh, in a row, Graham Lee's numbers uh, have tailed way off tonight. A little bit of inconsistency, uh, bad timing between Lee and his receivers. And again, they've been in a hole much of the night. Lee fakes it, nicely done, going for the bundle. Little bit short, but it's caught anyway to Martinez Williams. Down the sidelines, one of the DBs, Jovan Giles, pulled up and he thought he had the interception, but it went right over his head. Well, and a good job by Martinez of keeping focused on the ball. You know, it's so hard to continue to look at that ball when there's arms flailing around and people moving in front of you. Here it is again. Right through the other, the defender's hands. Martinez did a good job of staying on the ball. Here it is again. Watch his concentration. This is exceptional concentration right here. Kirk That's Robbins. one of the hardest yeah. passes to catch. Yeah, but Kirk Robbins was also open. Let's look at our Frost Mortgage replay and the 36-yard completion. As the ball in Hawaii territory at about the 38. High formation. Marion the tailback has it and a blocker. Down the sidelines. First down and more for Deion Marion, his best run of the night. Jared Baxter, who looked like he was slowed up a little bit, helped to seal that play off the fullback. Well, well, great block. And, you know, you block that linebacker on that option play, on that option pitch, you block that linebacker, and it's going to go for five, six, seven yards. That's the way the play is diagrammed. And Jared has done an excellent job right there, sealing off that blocker, giving Dion an opportunity to run up the field. Quincy LeJay made the tackle, but too late to prevent the first down. Marion is the lone setback right now. Baxter goes in motion. Little pitch has a hole inside the 20 yard line before he's brought down. Matt Elam helped to make the tackle from Sugarland, Texas. Dion's best games as a Lobo, from my recollection, has been on artificial turf. He seems to, to do better on it. Had a nice big game against UTEP last year. He likes that turf. You know, there's a lot of spring down there. You know, we walked down on the turf yesterday and the day before. And there's a lot of spring. You get the right shoes and get the right feel. Dion seems right at home. Robbins and Taylor wide right. Gordon the setback. The offensive line give them credit. Opening up some big holes there. He gets the first down before Gonzalez brings him down. Uh, Jim Fenwick is just saying, I'm going to run at you here. We're going to man block. And uh, my guy is going to beat your guy. And that's exactly what's going on there. It looks to me like some simplified blocking schemes, and they're just man-man blocking and opening some holes. Josh those Lobo backs. Left tackle Josh Brown out of Aztec. John Sanderson, Jason Carson, Chris Wallace, and Chad Thacker. That's the front five. First and ten for New Mexico. Pitch again, and a blitz almost, almost got Gordon in the backfield. He gets back to the line of scrimmage. Kamula, uh, Kamuela Cobb Adams made the tackle along with uh, Tuioti again. Well, that's easy for you to say. 
fifth, sixth time around, and yeah, I'm you're about doing to get fine. it once. You're doing fine. You, you needed to get out. I saw you out there practicing on the street signs the other day. <laughs> if you get out of the hotel a little more, you'd probably be able to pronounce these. You think I should? Yes. Yeah. Second down and ten. Lee marking out the signal. Six seconds on the clock. Gets it off. Quick pass, complete, inside the five, first down. That's called a hot pattern, Mike. Graham saw eight in the box, he saw everybody come, and he ran a hot pattern to the, to the uh, split out, uh, to the slot back. Slot back took the ball, man coverage, sitting on the two yard line. That's Tyler Fenwick, he's the slot man here, the offensive coordinator's son. Hot pattern right there. And that's what you do, you want a two step drop and just deliver that ball when they're bringing the entire uh, defensive team, and that's what they were doing right then. Out. Tyler does a good job. Yeah, I think the shoulder is, is why he's still down. That's Tyler's a possession receiver. He's a really tough kid and scrappy over the middle. See his numbers there. It'd be tough to be a, uh, a coach with your son on the field and in a situation like this. And I don't know if uh, Coach Fenwick is upstairs today or, or on the ground. He's, he's done both. As the offensive coordinator, but look for a short guy with huge calves on the sideline. That's him. Man's got the biggest calves I've ever seen. Saw him in some tw swimming trunks yesterday. <laughs> My God, he's got legs on him. Sometimes you give more information than everybody needs oh, to know. Oh, really? Greg. Yeah. He's got these big calves. Any, any of you gals out there are calf people. You need to meet Jim Fenwick. He's got a great set of legs on him. Oh, that's a shame. Well, it is. It looks like a leg. I know uh, Gail Fenwick is watching tonight. Gail. Hopefully it's not as bad as it looks. Looks like an ankle. Yeah, that's Tyler's mom. She's a real nice lady, and boy, she knows her football. But that's all awful hard for a mom to watch on television. We'll try to get an update for you as soon as we can. Graham Lee's numbers have picked up considerably here on the first drive of the second half. Gail's watching him, and Gail's saying, "See, he hung onto the ball and everything." After after taking that hit. Quick pitch to Reginald Johnson who goes inside. You know, Reggie's a type of running back. I, I think it's maybe a little more effective outside, outside the tackles rather than inside the guards. Well, he's a true uh, deep eye back. He's got real quick feet, uh, great acceleration, and uh, this is one of those situations, <laughs> I hate to beat a point, but I like I like Lennox or Dion in there at 200 pounds when you're rather than close. Reginald. But uh, they're, gonna, they're gonna give uh, Reginald his four touches. And that's what they're going to do. Second down now for the Lobos. You see all the Hawaii players inside the box there. There's, there's uh, eight inside in the, box. the tackles, and even maybe even more than that. And Graham Lee didn't like the look of things, so he uses a timeout. And we'll take a break as well. Our score here in Honolulu, New Mexico, on top, ten to nine. Lobo for inside the five-yard line. And and the one area where the Lobos have been deep this year is a wide receiver, but Germany Thompson has not returned to the lineup since his injury in the second quarter. And now the injury to Tyler Fenwick, and the Lobos getting thin at wide out. Let's see what they do now. Second down. Lee, option, gives the pitch to Marion, and he excellent. scores! Last minute Whoa. pitch. Wasn't that excellent the way he took the hit and then pitched the ball at the last minute? Great timing. On his way down, Lee gives it to Graham, or Graham Lee gives it to Dion Marion, and the handful of Lobo fans here love it. Well, it was excellent. Excellent. Watch this. Boy, that's that's almost brilliant. What a job that's on our a, Frost Mortgage replay. That's an exceptional quarterback performance there. And, and you know, Dion kept himself, kept that good cushion, kept himself in position to make the play. So many times a tailback will not uh, maintain the distance and maintain the velocity. That's a good point. He did, and he scored. 17-0, New Mexico leads. 17-0 lead over Hawaii. The Rainbows in serious trouble now. Graham Lee got it together in that last drive, and it was a uh, a terrific drive for the Lobos. At one point, they were averaging over 12 yards per play before they got the ball inside the five. Well, and at 8.2 uh, points per game, it's going to be a little tough for the Rainbows to catch up. Little pooch kick right there, and the fair catch. So Hawaii will start at around the 29-yard line. That time they used Mike Ross, who had been the field goal kicker, had been benched after a couple of misses, so he does a nice job pooching the ball inside the 30. 
Well, you know, that was uh, received by Bobby Morgan, who's a fullback, backup fullback. You'd think he'd want to take the ball yeah. and run down the field. I, <laughs> I'm a little surprised that he called for the fair catch there. You know, um, Antoine Wright has returned, to, who's the, one of the frontmen for the Lobos, a linebacker, has returned six kicks this year, which is pretty amazing. Tonight, the Lobos in the red zone are three for three, two touchdowns and a field goal. Well, Antoine's been getting up the field. He's a, you know, he's a senior and he wants to play. And Robinson, the quarterback, and the handoff goes nowhere. That's uh, Derek Zoller, the fullback. He is nailed. Randall Price is there. Give you a little update. Uh, the Surrey's out, and they're taking Tyler Fenwick off in the Surrey, but he did get into the Surrey on his own. Uh, it looks like his right ankle. So uh, not good news, but not the worst news that you could have right. on an injury either. That's true. Kane and Morris, the receivers. Pressure up the middle. Intercepted. McDavid with it. Marcus McDavid's first interception of the year, and the Lobos back in business bring the offense out. Well, there's, a, there's the turnover, and there's a turnover deep in the opponent's territory. That's the kind of defense that Rocky Long's used to running. That's the kind of defense he ran at Oregon State. That's the kind of defense he ran at UCLA, and this is what he's been looking for to happen with his defense, and there it is. And that's, that's the kind of defensive play that's going to give this Lobo offense an opportunity to to run up the score on its opponents. First career interception for Marcus McDavid out of Inglewood, uh, Colorado. The junior brings it in. And the Lobos have, to this point, done a nice job with the turnovers. Let's we'll see if they can convert again. Baxter up the middle. And you can see the Rainbow Warriors fighting for that football. They need to make something happen as far as something positive on the defensive side. That was a tackle by Anthony Smith. Lobos went back to the run on that play. And uh, really came up empty. And that's something. Uh, Jared Baxter packs a real load there. And, and uh, you've got to make a real good play to put him back into the backfield, hold him to nothing. Early third quarter, approaching 10 minutes to go. 17 nothing New Mexico. Wiggins goes in motion. Three. Had a man. Now he's got him in the end zone. Touchdown, Kirk Robbins. There's Kirk from Artesia, New Mexico. He, he, uh, he made it look like, uh, like he was playing Lovington out there. He was back behind everybody and, and uh, just wide, wide, wide open. Looked like Graham took a little too long to get it there. Yeah. I was kind of holding my breath. There he sees him. Second, nice job. Yep. Kirk keeps running his pattern, and that's so important. Cross he didn't stop on the ball. There showed exactly what happens. Happens. Second touchdown reception of the year for Robbins. Talking to him uh, yesterday down here. He said, you know, Hawaii's okay, but you can't beat New Mexico's weather. I said, what do you mean? What's wrong with Hawaii? It's too humid here. New Mexico's got the best weather. Well, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed him on the plane. We're, I'll get back to it in a minute. You bet. He's a real leader already. Lobo starting to pull away up 24 zip. D Wolf basketball this season on our sister station, UPN 50. With powerhouse teams in both conferences, you're guaranteed an exciting game every time. Look for all the great action on UPN 50 for Big 12 and Lobo basketball. This win. That's coming up pretty quick. Lobos look to be good again. New Mexico up 24 to nothing. A couple of uh, quick touchdowns here in the third quarter of play, and, and you look to one factor. The Lobos have eliminated the mistakes. Hawaii's continue to make the mistakes, put the ball on the ground, threw an interception. Lobos capitalized. He Ross. who makes the fewest mistakes wins the game. Ross with the little pooch kick. Hauled in by Wesley Morris, brought down around the 35 yard line. So Hawaii will try it again from there. Tackle made by Stephen Persley, the true freshman. And boy, th this team is loaded with true freshmen. That wasn't the plan to start the season. They wanted to redshirt some of these guys, but just uh, because of the injuries and some ineffectiveness, haven't been able to do it. The Lobos are starting a whole lot of freshmen and a whole lot of sophomores this year. I'm uh, I'm looking at the lineup and I'm looking at the number of freshmen and sophomores and I'm wondering what happened to the recruiting class of four years ago? Where are those juniors and seniors five years ago? Where are they? 
They're not on the field tonight. Some of them are in the NFL. No, I'm talking about juniors and seniors now. Where are they? The recruiting class of four years ago. Because the Lobos have been redshirting, you know, for years yeah. now. Yeah. Those guys should be out there. Where are they? Kane made the tackle, Chad, or rather the catch. Chad Smith made the tackle. The injury update, if we can, the Germany Thompson, a left hip pointer. He's questionable to return, and probably if they don't need him, they uh, they probably won't bring him back in. Well, a hip pointer is nagging injury. It's a, it's a whole lot of pain. You can still run, but boy, it hurts. That's one of those turf injuries, too. You're more likely to get it on the turf. I guess that can be true for just about any injury. Absolutely. Robinson across the middle, and oh, Erlacher laid out the wide receiver, Kane. And uh, another incomplete pass. That was a, uh, a big hit, and that kind of a hit will pay dividends later in the game. As he comes across on that uh, slant pattern again, he's going to be looking for Brian. And I think Brian would rather have a hit like that than an interception. That's why he's looking down at the re receiver rather than the ball. He's a tackler. You're not going to see Brian get many interceptions. He's going to get a few helmets with heads in them. Not, not too many footballs. Third and short, and, and the quarterback sneak gets it. And that may be one of the problems with that type of defense in a situation like that. Uh, you're going to get a decent surge for a yard or two on a play as simple as that. When you're lining three guys in a, in a three-point stance on the line of scrimmage and you're trying to stunt into the gap, the momentum is going to going to give the team uh, going to give the team a yard or two. Um, what you want to try to do is get into a gap eight at the snap of the ball. That takes perfect timing when you're not down there in the gaps on a three-point stance at the snap. 24 nothing New Mexico. Mike Powers along with Greg Frost. Trip set to the top of your screen. Three wide receivers. Robinson scrambling around a little bit. Has time. He's going to go for the bundle. Looking, and it's picked off again. There's another one. Chad Smith hauls it in. They're not going to give him his momentum into the end zone, Mike. Uh, Lobos have the ball, but it'll be at the two-yard line. But Chad Smith gets his second interception of the season. Chad comes over the top, plays ball. Now, when that ball goes in the air, Chad becomes a wide receiver right here. He's going to the ball, and it says, it's my ball right there. He's playing it like an offensive receiver. And the officials made the right call, didn't go Take into the end zone. Peek at it again. Looking from the uh, the front replay that we saw from the end zone, it looked a little bit like the ball may have slipped off Robinson's hands to the right, and I don't think he got his best throw on it there. That was a long pass. It he was. was thrown across yeah. his body, and the coaches will tell you, do not throw across your body, and that's what he did. Tried to go to that left corner, didn't get it done. Let's try to get some room out there. The next Gordon High steps it out past the five. Matt Paul is somewhere down there along with Mark Molder. Saw Lennox coming through the line of scrimmage with his with his soft cast out in front of him and a kind of straight arm there. Gave me a moment of start. He's got that uh, you know that stress fracture that broken hand. Don't need to be straight arming in there in the interior line. <laughs> He's sure reflex though isn't it? it kind of is, I guess. Yeah. You want him down in there you want him to lead with his helmet. That was a five yard gain. Another try, and boy, he scurries forward. Could have lost four or five, instead loses maybe a yard. We'll give James Polk some credit, along with Miles Garner. So the Lobos have a third down situation here. Rocky Long takes off the headsets. He's not used to uh, walking on the sidelines with those headsets like that. He likes to take them off. There's Garner grabbing him right away. Uh, crowd trying to get into it a little bit here. See if the Lobos try to pass for it. Robbins in motion. Delay. Gordon trying to find some room on the outside, and he's not going to be able to do it. So New Mexico will punt it away. The Rainbows uh, smell that one out quickly. Matt Elam will give him credit for the tackle there. Well, there's a situation where uh, the Lobos didn't benefit much by that interception. They'll be punting from uh, deep in their end zone. Yeah, they'll waste uh, three or four minutes, and Hawaii will probably get the ball back uh, pretty close to where they 
ended up that last drive. Charles Tharp is back and relatively quiet today. Bloom gets it off, off the side of his foot, so Hawaii is going to have great field position. And we have a flag down, apparently either running into the kicker or... But it will be against Hawaii, and it is... Uh, well, did they, did they get their hand on the ball, Mike? That's the question. You know, the ball went off the side of his foot. Did it go off the side of his foot, or was it partially blocked? That'll have an effect on whether or not there's a penalty and a first down, or... Well, let's see if we can see it here. Hawaii coming. Oh, yeah, oh. definitely. Gee, that's too bad. Uh, number 17 really didn't, didn't uh, hit Jason. He kind of swung yeah. his feet around. Chris Riccardi ran into him, and... And you still have to protect the kicker. You, you, you can't allow him to be vulnerable out there. Personal foul, roughing the kicker on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. I'd probably be uh, booing a little bit if I was a rainbow uh, you right gotta now. you got to call that one. I, I think any, uh, the guy's trying to kick the ball, and if you hit him. Uh, he hit him when he came down. He kind of just on his ankle or something like that. It's kind of, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad Lobo's got the first down. That's kind, of a, right, kind of a cheesy yeah, penalty. I don't think so. <laughs> Lobos get the first down. Looking for a bundle again. Down the sidelines, and oh, look at the catch. And, and the, the catch, I think, flag. was out of bounds, but there will be a flag to uh, Martinez Williams did a nice job coming back for the ball. Once again, there were hands in front of him, and he's focusing on the ball and maintaining excellent, uh, excellent uh, concentration. Yeah, but it goes against Martinez. You can see him smiling a little bit, walking back, and, and wa watch the push here. Oh, there he is. Woo! A little bit. He's a big-time player. Yeah. I mean, that's a nice, I mean, hey, that's a penalty and all, but, I mean, uh, when you're a wide receiver, you want to catch the ball, and you want to get that guy out of your way, and he did a nice little push, and and then still caught the ball. I, I'm impressed with that play. On the defense, half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. Martinez was looking at my spotting board on the way over here, and I've got him down at 165 pounds, and he said, you can say I'm 170. Yes, he's... He's 170 after a big meal. He, uh, that takes a lot of athletic ability to do what he did. You can't make, you can't make a penalty like that unless you're an athlete. Well, so New Mexico with the ball. It's first and 21 back at the 10. Robin's getting a lot of playing time, going in motion. Lee has some time. Over the middle deep. It. Cutting back, looking for a blocker. Still on his feet, and he goes down. He'll get 10 of that back. Ben Bright makes the tackle. And, and this is a situation where Rocky Long preached to him at the beginning of the year. I want you to go down. I don't want you to try to get two or three extra yards. I want you to go down. And Graham didn't really go down on his own that time, but he, he managed to get out of there without getting hurt. Well, Graham had Kirk Robbins down the field for about 30 extra yards there right over the middle and didn't see him and kept the ball. And Kirk was had beat his man deep. He was at the 40-yard line. Second down, nine. Much pressure, and the ball is dropped. Good effort by uh, Martinez Williams that time. Had to kind of adjust right at the last second, so uh, incomplete pass. Now let's watch the ball. He's trying to come back for the ball. You know, I've I've uh, talked to you about this before. These are the catches that. Uh, that Lobo receivers used to make, Mike, yeah, is uh, he, he coming back and scooping the yeah. ball. I think of Larry Brown and I think of Gavin Perlman and, and the receivers that were... Uh, Carl were Winston was Carl Winston coming yeah. back and scooping it off the turf. Uh, Stony Case, that was a patented pass. He threw it 12 inches off the ground and it was an automatic first down. No one else could catch it. Well, the pass was there. It's third down now and nine. Lee changes the play. Four seconds left on the clock. pumps and goes deep and you're going to have a hole there should have been a hole downfield the official missed it that was a terrible miss that time Kirk Robbins had beat his man and he was grabbed at about the uh, five yard uh, line well, deep. well the defender just walked over to the sidelines with Kirk's wallet I mean <laughs> yeah. he, he grabbed him he pulled his wallet out of his pants and Kirk almost went down and no flag I think I'm the only one complaining about it though Kirk came uh, over to the sidelines. Didn't raise a fuss. It'll bring up fourth down. 
Green will try it again. Long kick. The sideline. Tharp. Boy, he's a nifty little runner here, and he's still on his feet. Now he goes down inside the 50. Too many missed tackles yeah, on special yeah, teams, Mike. Yeah. Too many missed tackles. Well, Jeopardy is television's number one quiz show, and with the new season, you'll see new tournaments, on-site tapings of many fascinating locations, and other special features guaranteed, guaranteed to please the Jeopardy fan. You can watch Jeopardy Monday through Saturday at 6, only on CBS 13, 10, and 6. Alex Trebek, after all these years, still a good-looking guy. Good-looking guy. Sharp, yeah. Three surgeries, and uh, you can't hardly tell he's had that facelift, <laughs> can you? <No. laughs> he's 84 years old. <laughs> no. Dick Clark's younger brother, yes. right? <laughs> you put him in a thousand-dollar suit. Heck, you get in a thousand-dollar suit. You look good. <laughs> Are you saying that's what it takes? Well, it helps. Robinson, the quarterback, pressured up the middle, down the sidelines, kind of has it, and is pushed out of bounds by Erlacher. Well, the, fan, the fans here love their football, don't they? I mean, there's a, great there's a fans. crowd of about 20,000 or so spread out over the field. Their team is down 24 nothing, but there's still a big roar when they make a big play. Well, and they're, they're uh, supporting you. They're tailgating before the game. They're, uh, they're still here. There's fans. This is a real tall stadium. And there's fans way up at the top. And I'm, I'm looking here and I'm saying, well, why are you way up at the top when there's seats down below? There's, there's people 200 yeah. feet up in the air here, way at the top of the stadium. Steven Persley was beaten on that play, going across the middle. And good coverage on the far sidelines by Casey Johnson. They were looking for Dwight Carter. Well, Almost are getting more pressure now, Greg, than they have been. And I guess maybe it's because they know they're going to pass every time. Well, they've got to pass at 24 to nothing. It's, it, they're going to throw, throw, throw. And uh, so the Lobos are teeing off on him, and you're seeing uh, Bronco Mendenhall call uh, more blitz packages. Steven's a freshman, and he's out there trying to play corner. He's trying to play man-to-man -man coverage. God bless his little heart. I mean, that's, that's just a tough sure. thing for an 18, 19-year-old kid to do. Second and 10. First right time on turf, turf, probably. And there's, a, there's a stand up line there. There's two down line there. Finally, uh, Hawaii has a penalty. They have not had very many on the offensive side of the ball. They've had some special teams penalties. Given the movement that the Lobos have done on the defensive line, jumping in, jumping out, Prior you have to the snap, ball start on the offense, five-yard penalty, still second down. Uh, they've done a good job of holding their uh, stance, you know, to the snap count. They've done a better job than Lobos have, if you want to know the truth. Lobos have, what, four, five? Offside penalties on offensive line. There's a good look again at the offensive coaches here, right up next to us, calling down the plays to Fred Von Oppen. And he'll relay it in. Second down now. The rollout for Robinson, looking for the end zone again. Has his man Clark across the middle, and they'll be short of the first down. The Carter, rather, Dwight Carter made the uh, catch. Well, uh, Hawaii has gone to a modified rollout offense to move the pocket outside and take away some of that Lobo. See him moving outside. He's trying to take away some of that Lobo blitz package. And there's one right is getting a lot of playing time. Yeah, he's getting a lot of playing time. But that was a good hit, but terrible wrap. Uh, wide receiver got another three yards after the catch, but he shouldn't have got. You can't just hit him. You got to hit him and, and, and wrap him. Got to lock him. Third down and three. A little fade route into the end zone. Touchdown, Hawaii. Wesley Perfect. Morris beat his man on the far sidelines, and Hawaii gets on the board. Well, it was a perfect route and a perfect pass. It was just, that's a perfect fade route. You know, short fade. They're on a five-yard line. Excellent execution. Robinson's a good quarterback. You give him time, he's going to throw the ball down the field. Looked like he beat Stephen Pursley on that far side. Well, again, the freshman's in there. He's playing man coverage. And he covered that wide receiver sure. pretty well. It's just a good it's offensive an excellent play. play. It's an excellent play. Trout boots it through, and Hawaii takes that to zero off the board. It's now 24 to 7, New Mexico, with 4:36 to go in the first quarter. And, and I guess I shouldn't have talked about that shutout. Well, it's not your fault. Thank you. Partly her fault. <laughs> I, uh, 
Good pass, though. I mean, this was a nice That's touch. Excellent and, play. Yeah. Personally, was there. And I admire the play. And you got a senior going against a freshman, yeah. and he's probably going to win that battle. I, I thought it was interesting. Uh, uh, the uh, PAT went through without a hitch. That's about as far away as the two field goal attempts yeah. were. And uh, well, it was not a pretty extra point, though. I mean, it kind of floated in there just over the bar, but it was good. Nice to see the Lobos uh, getting out of that uh, extra point problem with you know getting Jason right there to, to kick them all. He's doing it all on the kicking, by the way. Well, it took just 58 seconds. 12 yards of play. Yeah. It's a little reminiscent of New Mexico State, eh? You would have to bring that up. Big difference, well, though, you is the Lobos about, were up 24 nothing, and it's the third quarter. You, you talked about a shutout. <laughs> and Hawaii fakes the onside kick. It's a little bit like uh, Army did today against uh, Notre Dame, a same, similar type of setup, and, and they go back and kick it away. Still have to watch for that onside. Here, though. They'll boom it. Deion Marion at the goal line. At one time, he was leading the nation in kickoff returns. Cuts back, and he had a bad read that time. If he would have went to the right, I think initially he might have picked up a few more yards. But Coach will be happy. Get the ball in the 25-yard line. If you're, uh, your kickoff return to get you the ball in the 25-yard line every time, uh, you'll keep him in there, and you'll pat him on the fanny when he comes out of the game. Mark Boulder with the tackle. There you on that special teams play. So New Mexico with the lead, 24 to 7. By the way, the uh, last Lobo shutout, 1984 against West Texas. Won't happen tonight. So what? Uh, that oh, okay. at all. That's one of those trivia things we don't need anymore because they scored. <laughs> That's why I wanted to use it. <laughs> oh, you want to use I was, it? I was saving it for later, <laughs> but now it's no good. Well, I had my WAC championship trivia stuff. Should I pull that out? <laughs> It'll bring the chance. Oh. The Lobos in the Pacific Division this year. Now we have another uh, illegal motion play. Not sure who moved. Again, they're going to that the right side, and I'm not going to say it was Brian Johnson because I just don't know. He's highly suspect. <laughs> Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. You know, there's, for, there's an ecstatic Rocky yeah. Long. <laughs> for a while, uh, if I remember right, let, maybe we can see it here. Look on the right-hand part of your screen. As soon as we get this replay going, maybe we can tell. Oh. Uh, right so he, he got in a stance and then got back up from a stance, and, uh, and you can't do that. This is a young man, though, that's going to have a big career for New Mexico. Two touchdown passes uh, this season, 14 receptions overall from Littleton, Colorado. Lee fires, complete. Martinez Williams picking up the slack that uh, was left when Germany Thompson went out of the game along with Tyler Fenwick. Well, and there's a there's an example of the predetermined route. Now the precision passing. It looks much more precise now that the wide receivers are not reading the D back but running to a specific spot. And uh, Graham Lee's just playing catch with him. That's a predetermined route, regardless of the coverage. He makes his move. The ball's there. And he pick up eight yards. Second and short. And that's Gordon. Slides on through and will be close to the first down marker. He looks to be a little bit shy. Molner is there again with the tackle. Let me ask you this. All right. Why then go to those hot read kind of deals where, where maybe you're going to have that type, time, type of confusion? Well, they've gotten away from it. I know uh, they have, but why do that in the first place? Well, what is the advantage of it? The, the advantage is, is a wide receiver. When you've got a wide receiver that's been playing that for several years, he can get open many more times than a, than a receiver can with a predetermined route. But it takes a tremendous amount of precision between the quarterback and the wide receiver, and it takes more than, uh, than uh, spring practice and, uh, and uh, two-a-days to get it done. It takes years in the system. It does. They will bring the chains out and stretch them out to see if New Mexico got the first down. Nope. Just a little bit shy. Well, I mentioned that this. I think they'll go for it on second I, down. I think that, okay. that's actually. I think it's third down now. There's it? there's Gavin Bevis. There's a there's a guy that uh, makes things go that here at the athletic department. He gets us here and gets us fed. 
Thanks, Kevin. He does a good job, a great job. He's, He's the guy that orga organizes the, the flights out here, the hotels, the buses, the tours if you're in Hawaii where the guys can get a chance to, to get away from football for a little bit. And, and uh, it, it sounds like something of an easy job, but it is not. Oh, no. He's a full-time uh, travel agent and coordinator of transportation. He's a great guy. And he's a nice guy, too. He came to the program with Dennis Franchot. And stayed. He was, in fact, Rudy Davlos thought he was, it was critical to keep him here. Third down. Gordon gets it. Boy, he took a shot, too, from Gonzalez. There was a nice little pull and guard play there. Yeah, that, that line play for the Lobos on that was, was really nice. Uh, Gordon got up a full head of steam and he got he got past the initial the initial defensive line. It was the linebacker that made the tackle on him. That's exactly how the play should have been run. Approaching three minutes to go in the third quarter. Lobos after a sluggish start came out uh, big time in the third quarter put a couple of quick touchdowns up on the board to go up 24 nothing and now lead it 24 seven. Gordon's numbers, 13 carries, 40 yards. Good fake. Going for the bundle. Martinez Williams overthrown. He had him, didn't he? Yeah. Martinez had him. Graham knew it and a little bit disgusted with himself. You know, that looks so easy when you see him do it, the pros and the physics of that whole thing. Getting that ball out there, throwing it exactly 47 yards <laughs> and the trajectory. We we'd watch it on TV and we we tend to, you know think that it's so easy but that's try get out in your front yard and try to do that sometime it's, it's a an art and Graham's real good at it and this is a guy who is going to get a, a real legitimate shot at playing in the National Football League coaches think he'll be drafted no question about it up the pocket Jay Johnson makes the catch he'll get the first down on that his forward motion gave him the first yep. down James, Good job for Che. Yeah, James Polk on the coverage that time, but Che, the senior who has played just about every offensive skill position for the team. Real utility man, and he's uh, he's senior year, and he, you know, he caught 12 passes at that position last season. Put him out there because he was such a good downfield blocker. He came, you know, he played full black, he played tailback. He could go downfield and throw blocks, and that's what they had him doing last season was going down and blocking on the pass plays. Caught 12 passes. I think he's close to 12 this season already. In fact, that's exactly what he has right now. That was pretty good. The numbers for Graham Lee, 11 to 23, 143 yards and a touchdown. He also has a rushing team. Oh, watch out. Here's the pass. Downfield. And incomplete, but a flag is thrown. And if Marion could have got the ball to Kirk Robbins sooner, that definitely would have been six. Well, let's see who the penalty's on. Is no. it on Kirk or is no, it no. on the defense? No, this is on the defense. Kirk did a good job, didn't he? He's not supposed to be that fast, and yet he was behind everybody. Oh, he, oh he's fast. Is he, he fast? He's a state champion in the 100 meters. I, in fact, I asked him that question uh, as we again listen to uh, the referee here, Frank White. And I'll finish my thought in just oh, a second. Oh, I'm glad you told me that. I was ready to say something. Defensive pass interference, 15-yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. Now, Kirk Robbins I ran a 10-5, I think, in high school in the 100. And uh, I asked him if he was as fast now, and he said he, he th I thought he was faster. There's the look at it there. The guy doesn't hit him in the throat. He makes that catch. Yeah, Donnell Williams. <laughs> kind of hard to catch when somebody's rubbing your Adams apple yeah. with their forearm. Of course, in uh, college football, it's a 15 yard penalty, so it's not quite as dramatic. And the Lobos have done a nice job here in the second half. I think they've just got the two penalties. Well, if that's a nice job, if that's your idea, a nice well, job. It's a better job. Very advancing for a couple of yards. That uh, Texas two step isn't going to get you anywhere. You've got to, uh, you've got to run hard. Let's get Lennox back in there. <laughs> I like Lennox running with the ball. Soft cast and all, I like it. You're not a, an agent or anything, are you? Well, I just like the way he runs. I mean, he runs hard. He didn't dance around. Drags people. Well, you, the thing about Lennox will dance around, but he does it faster. So well, when he's going so he forward. To, yeah, he's he going dances. forward. You know, Texas two-step, you're supposed to back your dancing partner up. Lennox does that. You're not supposed to let him back you up. Two step right into him a little bit. See, I did not know that. I'm telling you. 
Second down play. Another pump to Robbins again, who's turned into something of a go-to guy here in the second half. Good coverage, uh, good pressure by uh, Gonzalez. Well, James Polk, middle. James Polk did a good job on the corner too. He took Robbins out of his route. He just kind of put a hip on him and rode him out of his pass route, and uh, that's that was a good defensive play. Really finessed. Him. You were going to talk about Robbins and the flight over, were you not? Well, I liked him. He's he's a uh, he's a uh, He's down there from Artesia, you know, small little school with a great football tradition. And uh, didn't know that his dentist was a consensus All-American at the University of New Mexico, Dr. Larry White. From Hobbs. Correct? From Hobbs, yes. Third down play. And that was a little bit wide. And Martinez Williams was the intended receiver. Well, no. So it's a fourth down play. Well, there, Martinez, it was an out pattern. It was called Martinez tried to make his cut with his outside foot and doing a full pirouette, come back to the outside. Ball got there before he did. You really need to make that cut with your inside foot. Well, Jason Bloom is on to uh, try the field goal from about 52 yards. Eric Jaworski will hold. Jason Carson will snap it. Bloom kicked one from 52 yards last week against San Diego State. Boy, that looks like a long ways, from, doesn't it, from our end zone camp. On its way. It's there. Good. Yeah. Good. Bloom does it again. 52 yards, and New Mexico now up 27 to 7. Well, if uh, if you could only roll back the clock, what might this season have looked like with Jason Bloom kicking the extra points and well, I, and the and the field goals maybe. the last few games? But uh, Bloom did miss an extra point against San Diego State in defense of Mike Ross. It's just one of those weird things that I didn't I didn't mention Mike's name. I'm not picking on anybody. I just said it would be nice to turn think about that. Turn back the clock and let him kick those. Well he's doing all the kicking tonight. Yeah. Yeah he is except for the pooch kick. A couple of those. Nine play drive, 40 yards, 331. Who's kicking the pooch kick? Mike Ross is. Michael. Yeah. I asked he's still, he's still in the United States, Mike Ross? Yes, he is. They didn't exile him? No. <laughs> okay. Uh, he's a kid who's going to contribute gonna to this. I wasn't going to mention, I wasn't gonna mention him. I'm sorry. He kicked a, a big-time field goal in overtime for New Mexico against Utah State. This one will be fielded at the 10-yard line by Robert Grant. Trying to find a hole. Gephardt looking for him. Finally brought down around the 36-yard line or so. Did you say he took it at the 10? I think I did, didn't I? 25 yards. Something Hawaii is pretty good at. Stacy Washington in on the tackle, over 54. But uh, as far as Jason Bloom, of course, he was an all-whack punter from last season and uh, called on this year to do some of the uh, place kicking and field goal kicking. And, and uh, the NFL definitely interested in him. He's had scouts out looking at him. He's answered some questionnaires. And he's going to get a chance to perform on Sunday, too. Quick pitch to Tharp. Oh, brought down. Nice tackle. Chad Smith. Chad came in from the, from the wing there and just got in the middle of that play. What a nice play. I think this may be Chad's best game of the year, or close to it. He's I got think the so. interception and some nice tackles. I think so, too. Um, the... The whole offense of the Rainbows is not quite as quick as some of the teams we've seen, and Chad uh, Chad plays better in a situation like that, and he's come up and figured in a lot of plays tonight. Kane, Morris, the wide receivers. Robinson looking to pass. Looking for Morris, who had to turn back around. Had his man beat McDavid over there, but Robinson couldn't find him. Marcus uh, Marcus got Christmas a little early right there. That was a present uh, because he was turned around and beat. It was an excellent pass route run by the Rainbow wide receiver. Just missed the throw a little bit. Robinson wishes he had that one again. Robinson looking to the sidelines now and getting the play. Third down play. Well, that's what the locals had in the first three or four games. The quarterback just couldn't get the ball to the wide receiver. Rainbows are still suffering that way. Pressure up the middle. Here comes the screen to Tharp. Nicely done. Still on his feet. To the 40. To the 30. 
down, run out of bounds at about the 27-yard line by Smith. That was a nice call. The, the throw on the pass just over the outstretched arms of the Lobo defender. Well, read that Lobo pressure just right. We'll be back with the fourth quarter after this. Lobo. When you can't be at the game, the best way to enjoy football is with a Panasonic Big Screen Home Theater TV from BIOS. Featuring Panasonic's Advanced Picture in Picture, Dolby Pro Logic Surround Sound, and more. Join me each Monday night at 11.30 on UPN 50 for the Rocky Long Show. Coach Long recaps all the past weekend's action, takes a look at the Lobos' next opponent, which is Fresno State, by the way, this week. Rocky Long Show, Monday nights at 11.30 on UPN 50. Now, it's not the Rocky Long Show this week. He's being bumped for Athletic Director Rudy Davalos. No way. Yes. After a big win on the road, you need to bump Rudy. Maybe we'll have to do that. Down the middle, tipped in the air. Erlacher couldn't hang on to it. I think uh, I think everybody listening in needs to call the station and see and let's take a vote and see whether they no, want Rocky Long or, or they want uh, Rudy Davalos. Greg, there are a few things you, you've done a great job <laughs> in the booth this first year, <laughs> but don't don't tell people to call light the up station. those switchboards. Come on, everybody, who do you want to see on on Monday night, Rocky Long or Rudy Davalos? Well, this is already predetermined by U and M. It has nothing to do with UPN 50 or myself. You're, 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 you're See, disclaiming this, all no, responsibility. This was done to give Rocky a break and after the trip. You media guys. <laughs> you're one of us. Oh, well, that's right. <laughs> Down the ball. Oh, great pass. Incomplete. The ball hit the ground. Looking for Kane, and the pass was there. Maybe just a tad short. He couldn't bring it in. Well, you know, I'm going to tell you, he's going to remember that play for about 50 years. I, I still remember one like that I dropped against UTEP when I was a freshman. He's always going to remember that play. Poor guy. Could have had it, should have had it, would have yep, had it. Yep. He's a senior. Oh, boy, you hit his head. I was a Not freshman. Not an easy play. Well, no, but when you touch it, you're supposed to catch it. Um, man, I did that. You know, Mike, I ran right out of the stadium. I didn't even run back to the bench. I was so... I was so humiliated. See, there's a nice place to run right out of the stadium. Yeah, here there is, yeah. yeah. Third down and 10. Robinson being pressured and hit, but he completes it to the tight end. But it'll be a little bit short of the first down. Iosua made the catch, his second of the game. And, and I think it was Bill Borchers that uh, put a crunch on Robinson. He did an excellent job. And Robinson did a good job of getting the ball off. Uh, you know, he was he was uh, under extreme pressure and Casey Tisdale was supposed to get out to that short outside and he just didn't get there. I think he thought that the quarterback was going down. I think he pulled up a little step or two and then he had to turn on the afterburners just to make the play. Why he's got to go for yeah. it here. Mark. Well, they are. The play clock is down to nine now, so they better hurry. The Lobos go with their nickel package on fourth down and about three. From the shotgun, low snap. Incomplete, and there's a flag. Marcus McDavid was right there, but apparently a little bit too early. Marcus, uh, somebody lost a shoe on that play. Well, the receiver did. Marcus, you're supposed to get the ball, not the shoe. You get the shoe, they throw the flag. Well, that, that's a play that plagued New Mexico early in the season. And I Boy. think probably it's a good call, but we were there a little bit late. Uh, maybe we can see it better here. Defensive pass interference. It's the left hand that does the it. Spot of the foul. First down. You can't uh, you can't put the left hand up there and kind of you know hold their hip a little bit when you're going for the ball with your right hand. If the ref sees the the left hand on the body, he's going to call it. That's a real hard. That's a real That's hard tough. pass pattern to defend. Tough play. The way you defend that is getting the, getting the tackle's hands up in front of the quarterback so he can't throw it. It's about the only defense for that play. The officials uh, still doing a little bit of uh, discussion here. 
Hawaii trying to convert a second opportunity at first and goal. The first time around they missed a field goal. Or actually was stopped uh, short on fourth down. Right. Well, let's see if they've got this thing figured out. I, I think they're having some trouble spotting it in the right place. You know what I miss this season? We used to be able to, you know, get a Coke and stuff, enjoy it during all the whack conferences out in the middle of the field. Don't you miss all those whack conferences, oh. the officials? Yeah, that's something we won't miss. With, we get uh, kind of dehydrated now without those whack conferences. There haven't been as many. Option. Robinson runs it this time, We're down to about the five-yard line. And that's a little bit of a new twist for him. Jeff McCray, 97, is in there in the defensive line, and uh, he didn't rap on that. He's a, a junior college transfer Born from, Hollywood, in Nicaragua. from Hollywood, California. See, I, I question this Hollywood, California. I haven't seen too many big defensive tackles come out of Hollywood, California. Have you? <laughs> I mean, where do you go? Hollywood uh, High School? Yeah, see, what kind Purvis of football there. do they play at Hollywood High School? He's a good player. Purvis well, missed him, though, and McCray missed him. And well, Purvis is another one. He's from Mission Viejo, California. Come on. Got to be from someplace somewhere. rough and tough. Ball in the air. Excellent. New Mexico forces another one, and it's Darrell Moten, the freshman. Good for him. What are they going to say now? Wait a minute. There's our conference. Let's there go get is. a Coke. Let's get a Coke now. Oh, they're not going to talk very long. Now they're going to say the ball hit the That's ground. The rule incomplete. Now here, this is interesting because this is the same scenario, and I bet Rocky Long is furious. Same scenario, and we'll get a look at it here to see if it's the right call or not. Oh. It was close. You could see maybe the ball hit the ground. But this is what happened to New Mexico against San Diego State in overtime. Okay, where he's got that ball. Where the officials closest to the play ruled a New Mexico touchdown. The judge from way across the field came over and overruled the play. Now, it was the correct call, but you still don't see that very often. There were a bunch of those uh, those calls against, um, against New Mexico State. Third down play. Going into the end zone, touchdown. So the reversal cost New Mexico six points. Marcus McDavid got just got beat on that drag post. Guy went down the field, gave him a move to the outside. Marcus, Marcus bit on it, planted his outside foot, came across, was wide open. Touchdown pass to Morris. I mean, he's open, open, yeah. open. And so this is, if you've been thinking about going to bed, folks, uh, not quite yet. Extra point try is good. Now, Hawaii has made a game out of this. We'll be back with more from the fourth quarter with the Lobos up 27-14. And lots of time left here in the fourth quarter. 27-14 our score. We had a quick look there at uh, Morris, who has three catches, two for touchdowns. And if you're Hawaii, Greg, do you a little bit early to think about going for the onside kick? A little bit early. They faked it. Now they're going to go for regular kickoff apparently they do that's a boomer Marion at the goal line down the sidelines and that's a big run that helps New Mexico out gets out of a hole maybe gives them a little bit of momentum now after the touchdown pass Morris with the reception and, and watch this little celebration and we'll get it right here their face masks. Well, that, stuck well, you, you try to smooch out there in the end zone, and that's going to happen to you. Well, that's no place to be smooching out there. Well, the Lobo offense, if they thought their night was done and things were going to uh, go into uh, overdrive or cruise control, think again. Lobos need to control the ball, and not have a penalty on this drive. Finally, running option has some room. Great blocking. Pulls up a little bit early, but he gains about seven yards. And did you see the wall form there, Greg? Very nicely done. Excellent blocking. And Graham's going to pick up five, six yards when he gets blockers out in front of him like that. You got about 600 pounds out in front of you running full speed. It's hard for those little, look at number two out there, you know, about 170 pounds. 
He didn't want to get up and get, get involved in that too bad. Donnell Williams, 175. Pounds. There you go. And he's 600 pounds coming. Well, those at guys him. aren't aren't on the team to make tackles. They're out there to cover guys. Well, in not, essence, <laughs> I know you. Not on that play. <laughs> up the middle, full back. Ball is loose. Hawaii has it. And a Turn saving it. tackle by New Mexico. That's Anthony Smith who brought it out of the pack. There's a turnover going the other way for the Lobos. Now the Lobos have been successful getting a 24 to what a 24 to 7 lead over over the uh, Rainbows by making a, making turnovers, causing turnovers and capitalizing on them. Here comes the uh, here comes the Rainbows back. Take advantage of the same situation. They're now on the 24 yard line. That was Baxter that fumbled it. Lost it rather early before he went down. And look at Graham Lee. It was Lee that made the touchdown saving tackle. Mark that one down as a key play, potentially. Athletic move there. Lobos once led 27 to seven. It's now 27 14. And the Lobos, after the Hawaii touchdown, cough it up on two plays. Defense goes right back out there. Connie goes in motion. Robinson, Mike flies. And Erlacher puts a hit on Kane. Now there's two flags down, one in the backfield and one in the secondary. Erlacher actually put his hands out and tried to uh, intercept that ball. And when he did, he jammed his left arm. He's holding his left elbow. Got a little jam there. Well, let's see what happened now. We have two penalties. Illegal shift on the offense. We have pass interference on the defense. Those penalties offset will replay the down. Well, pass interference? I didn't see it. Uh, he called pass interference. Looked to me like oh, the goodness. defender and the ball got there at the same time. Yeah. They'll try it again. Coach Long puts the headset back on. And Listening to his offensive or defensive coaches, Bronco Mendenhall up here near us. They got Bronco up in the booth this game. Yep. Robinson looking for the secondary. Decked. And no flag. No flag. Well, I believe they're going to say that it was an uncatchable ball. And in fact, may have been over his head when he got hit. That's Dwight Carter getting up slowly, and Chad Smith put the knock on him. This uh, this Hawaii Rainbow coach in the booth next to me is going nuts right now. <laughs> He's calling for the penalty. Across the middle. Yeah. Well, I think I think <laughs> you get, I think I think you I think they both got there. Oh. Well. Maybe things even out. Maybe we got a better look up here. Huh? Second down and ten at the. New Mexico 24. Four receivers. Everybody's going out for a pass on this. Lobos ought to be able to get pressure on him. On the shotgun. Rolling right. Being pressured. In the end zone. No good. No good. Wesley Morris was there and apparently it just kicked the turf. Boy, he beat Marcus McDavid, who's really had a tough go of it lately. Well, he's getting a lot of time to throw the ball. Yeah. You can only cover man as a deep post pattern. Marcus is running right along with him. That's a good call. That's a good call. Yeah. It's on the ground. Heck, he still doesn't have it. Another angle on it. Now you right, on right on the ground, there. right on the ground, right on the ground, still on the ground. He never did have the ball. The wonders of instant replay. Isn't Wesley got two TDs tonight? Yes, he does. Three receptions, two TDs. That's a nice little average. Of course, he's dropped a couple, too. Hawaii has been very successful on third down. They have another one. Robinson needs to get rid of it. Bat it away. Oh, that's a defensive play by Walter Bernard. Very nice job by oh. Walter. Jason Purvis was applying extreme pressure to the quarterback on that and actually stuck the quarterback right after the throw. You see his shoulder pads sticking out there. Knocked him right out of his jersey. You know, I don't want to get too excited about Walter Bernard. But after struggling earlier this season, teams have been throwing away from him. He had an interception uh, last weekend. Actually, I think it was against UTEP two weekends ago. And, and now they're not throwing his way anymore. We don't. We, it reminds me a little bit of Ramos McDonald, where he would be doing such a great job, you'd never call his name. Well, and Walter, to his credit, this is his third year of football. Walter right. hasn't played that many years of football. And uh, 
he's he's coming on every game. He's getting better and better. And he's trying to play in one of the toughest defenses for a cornerback. Is this man defense? They're going to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and ten. Robinson wants the bundle overthrows his man. That's a that's another example of where that that uh, continuous pressure. The Lobos haven't got the sack, but in the last few plays last couple of series they have gotten up in Robinson's face and they're forcing him to throw that ball a little off balance a little sooner than he wants to and he's not as sharp the last two series as he has been you know I, with the offensive coaches for Hawaii right next to me I don't want to say this too loud but I was not very impressed with that last series for Hawaii and maybe we can talk about that Lobos with the ball and the lead dodge a bullet they hold Hawaii on fourth down and the Lobos take over leading 27 14 big stop Ooh, he has some room if he wants to run it gives it up and the great catch by Robbins they'll say he caught it and in fact first I down thought he did that's the first, first down, down to Mexico you know Mike uh, I I wasn't real excited about the uh, play selection of the Hawaii offense that last uh, three or four plays they had done a real good job the last two times they'd had the ball of setting up the passes over the middle uh, mixing in the run and uh, it looked to me like they were just uh, trying to to beat Marcus McDavid deep and they ran three plays right at him uh, well, that's kind of what I was getting at it was it pass plays about the same length uh, you know nothing any any different it seemed like they got into a little bit of a rut there Maybe they were listening to Wesley. He was saying, I can beat this guy. Throw it to me. For the fullback up the middle. I don't know if that's Baxter or not. Last time he touched the ball, he fumbled it. Maybe they've gone to Holman Wiggins. And it is Baxter. So they go right back to him, and that's good. You like to see that. Absolutely. You've got to let him touch the ball again, get his confidence back. Rocky Long is a very patient coach. Rocky understands that these freshmen need to be brought along. He's coming off the field now to put Holman. But he's not going to he's not going to pull a kid out just because he makes one mistake. If, if he would have done that, we'd have had a different tight end in there, you know, the whole second half. Well, and credit his coaches because his, his position coaches make most of those type of decisions. Correct. Second down play, Lee gets rid of it, and his Good receiver job. was uh, pushed a little bit, Wiggins, but that's the next one. Job. That's that was yeah, job Jackson was on the coverage, the linebacker, and. And so that will bring up a third down now. He threw the ball out of bounds rather than take the sack earlier in the first quarter. We saw him take the sack on that same play. You don't want him to take the sack. He's, he's, got, a, he's got a third and seven rather than a third and 14 now. This game offensively has been just about dead even. 273 yards for the Lobos, 258 for Hawaii. And New Mexico, as you can see on the graphic, not very good tonight on third down plays. They have been very good, and they have been up around 500 yards total offense a game. They're going to come in far below that. Shotgun, blitz, hot read like you talked about to Brian Johnson, but he's short of the first down. Well, it's okay, because when, when you've got a blitz coming like that, the alternative is taking a sack. Lobos don't want to take the sack, so he's supposed to get the ball off to his, to his short receiver. That's a hot receiver, and uh, Brian did a good job of bringing the ball in. Now they've got a fourth and a foot. Fourth and yeah, I think it's more than a foot. foot. I yeah. see the fourth down marker over there. Lobos have been outstanding at fourth down conversions. Uh, one for nine. So here we go. <laughs> and, and that was really that's a gutsy the, call down there. One and nine. That's their history. Let's see what happens here. Well, this does surprise me. The one conversion was on really on a fake punt against San Diego State. With that's right. Eric Jaworski completing. Yeah, they're 0 for 0 for eight on offense. Interesting size. call. And Gramley will take a timeout right before the clock goes down to zero, and I think that was their plan all along. Timeout on the field with New Mexico up 27-14. His seventh punt of the night, and he's had a good night, averaging 47 and a half yards per kick, and that should help his average. Hawaii, though, is, looks like they're going to come and bring everybody. Bloom has time, gets off another good one. Tharp at the 12, looking for some room, has it. And he's pushed out of bounds that time on the far side by number 48 for the University of New Mexico backup nickelback, Reginald Sampson. 
You know, Reginald needs to do a better job of tackling on special teams than that. You know, that's a, that's a push and a shove, and that's not what you want. You want to go down there and hit them and lock up on them, make them hit the ground hard, and hopefully cause a fumble. Special teams can cause fumbles, sure. and it's tackles like that where you wrap them and guys running full speed, and you suddenly stop him in his tracks, he falls forward, and the ball bounces out. You're not going to get that when you push and shove like that. 37 to go, fourth quarter. Hawaii's having one of its better offensive nights. Put pressure up the middle by Purvis, and, and that forced him to uh, Robinson to get rid of the ball, looking for Charles Tharp. But uh, again, Purvis making some things happen. Well, think about this for a second. Now, Jason's a defensive end. He's 6'5, 250 pounds, quick as a cat. He's that kid from Mission Viejo. I was on the plane with him. I said, You don't look like anybody I've ever seen from Mission Viejo. That's a real yuppie community, Southern California beach community, you know? And he says, uh, you know, well, I, there's some people like me back there. I mean, he's just this big, good-looking, strong football player. Now, I should say that, that you are from California originally, so maybe you could, you are allowed to say that about Mission Viejo. Well, I, I grew up in East L.A. We always talked about those guys out of Mission Viejo. We never got to go there. We never had enough gas to get out to Mission Viejo. <laughs> Robinson. The tackle made by McDavid, and not before it's a first down. Morris again makes the tackle, and, and he's having a solid night. Looks like he's limping off a little bit, though. Morris has got McDavid's number. Poor Marcus. One of those nights, isn't Morris it? Morris is coming out there. He's looking at Marcus. I'm going to tell you what happens. You get out there, and Morris coming up the line of scrimmage, and he says, I own you, buddy. I own you. Coming right over you, this play. <laughs> and he just, uh, he's just, and he has. And he's catching on him at will. Just a 10 at the 40. A little bit of a delay, and that catches everyone by surprise. Fred Lau gets the first down. That was a strange looking play because by the time he got the ball, it must have sucked everyone up inside because there wasn't anyone out there, including a, a blocker. Well, Ranty Harper had to really turn on the afterburners to catch up. He was out of position on the play, too. And he's, you know, as a nickelback, he's supposed to be coming over the top hard, making the tackle inside out. And he was making the tackle backside in. He is a guy we haven't mentioned much tonight. He hasn't played since the New Mexico State game. Had surgery on his calf, hurt it in the game. And he's the type of guy who can make a big difference for this defense. He's a, he's a big play guy, again, even though we haven't called his name. And there, look at that. Is that Purvis? Sure it is. Like it, That's a good time to get your first sack. Absolutely. Look at that. Put some seven, eight yards back behind the line of scrimmage. How would you like to be a quarterback? See this guy, 6'5". No. You walk next to him? He looks bigger than 6'5 to me, too. He's just a monster. Look, boom. That was quick. Oh, and he was nice to him. Did you see that? Yeah. Jason was really nice to him. Didn't put his full weight no, on No, well, he didn't put his helmet in his back like he could have. He didn't. That was nice. Third sack for Purvis. They got a lot of season. gentlemen down there yeah, in Mission Viejo, California. <laughs> they do. Look at how look, he's a big, strong guy. Looking at First sack for the team today. Second and long. Corner blitz coming. Safety blitz from Smith. They go to the tight end across the middle. And he's brought down. That's a nice tackle. Yeah, good Iosua play. is the uh, receiver. And uh, let's see, who was that? The Henry, Henry Stevens. Stevens did, coming yeah. back across. Big old Henry. You know, Henry's a, a real nice kid. He's from Los Angeles. Henry's from West Los Angeles, Compton, Long Beach area. Bannon, California is what they listed. And, um, Rob Leffel, former Lobo right. basketball player, I believe. Right. Hen Bannon. Henry's mom's out here watching him. She works at Federal Express back in California. They have a deal with Southwest Airlines, and she was able to fly around and get out here for the game. It was great. Pretty good deal. Third down play for Hawaii. Back across, and this time we'll Excellent like defense. Hang on. Excellent, Marcus. That's the way. Excellent defense. Wesley Morris uh, couldn't hang on, and Lots of contact there, too, but this time when you kind of go through the receiver to get to the ball, they're going to let you have a little more contact. I think. Well, if you get there at the same time, that's the key. You've got to time it, and he did. And when you come underneath, like he's going to come here, boom, he comes underneath. Good time. You pop those shoulder pads, and when you pop those shoulder pads, it forces the wide receiver's arms up and out of the, of the grasp of the football. And he just played it perfectly. Jack Shrout is back to punt. Chad Smith is not in there. Let's see if who that is down at about the 10 yard line for New Mexico. A little high on the snap. 
With punt, and that's Martinez Williams, and it's going to roll just into the end zone. Martinez put a good hit on the referee in the end zone there on that. Did you see that? Well, apparently, all uh, 170 pounds. 170. <laughs> 170 LBS. He was 170 after lunch. I don't think he's 170 in the morning I, when he gets hey, up. He's gotten bigger. The guy is is starting to get um, a little meat on those bones, and and when he gets fully developed, I mean, this guy is going to be a player. Well, he's an athlete. He oh, just, he's tremendous. He's just he's just thin. You know, he's got like a 14-inch bicep. You know. How many people are you going to insult tonight? <laughs> I know you think it's late now. I like home. the way he catches the yes, ball, and I like the way he made that penalty. Gordon running hard up the middle. Now the Lobos will try to use a little clock with the lead. 13 points, the time, 7-12 and counting. This could be the last time New Mexico plays Hawaii in football. The Lobos leaving the whack. The president of this university in Hawaii very upset about it, and he doesn't want his team scheduling any breakaway schools. He's mad about it. He wants to go. I think he wants to go with New Mexico and the rest. But for whatever reason, a lot of it is the, is the expense of coming out here. They're, those schools didn't want it. Well, I think the uh, actually I think the University of Hawaii is upset because they had tried to make up for that expense. I think they had a deal working sure. where they would have subsidized the schools past the California state line any expenses that they had getting any further. And he thought he'd really come to the table. And uh, for some reason, um, you know, the powers that be in the among the eight teams that were that were breaking away. You know, it's kind of I, I I don't like to hear we're leaving the whack. The original WAC teams are leaving the WAC. Seven of those teams yeah. were original WAC teams that are leaving. The, you know, it's the WAC's leaving. <laughs> Minus the name. That yeah. was, by the way, a first down reception to Che Johnson, who did a nice job to stretch for it. The Lobos continue to work some clock. Now, keeping that, you know, along those lines, the Hawaii did use to subsidize those teams coming over here. And, and, and then they agreed got, to do it. Yeah, and, and uh, but when the WAC expanded, that went away. And, and it just didn't work. But they agreed to do it again. If they could, no, you're if right. they could that come was back. part of the deal. And this is a this is a this is a school that agreed to do it with a budget of losing four hundred thousand dollars on football and they still agreed to pony up. So they they've got to feel a little shunned. And, and so with all due respect, um, and it's a good team, it's a good deal for the teams that get to play them because they get that twelfth home they get that twelfth game and they get to have it at home, which means right. they get to sell more tickets. Uh, so it's a, you know, if, well, you, if you play over here, you make some more money at home. You get your trip subsidized. It's a good recruiting tool. I don't know. Well, for 10 minutes of nonstop news, weather, and sports, be sure to watch 10 at 10 on CBS Southwest. Now, I, I messed this promo up earlier. I'm not going to do it this time. Okay. Join Deanna Sousset, Art Barron, Robin Marshman, and me for all the day's headlines, plus more in-depth reporting after the first 10 minutes. I think you'll like it. When you don't want to waste any time, join us for CBS Southwest News and 10 at 10. Is that all right? That's a good picture of you, though. That's that's after all the uh, good makeup the face job. work I that you were a, talking about. a good about makeup job. I like it. Well, this, these are the numbers for the Hawaii offense this year. Total offense. 106th in the country. Scoring offense dead last, 112. And um, obviously, this isn't going to cut it. How Average do you get 112th eight? out of 110 Division I teams? 112. There's 112. Who'd they add? Marshall. Who's the other one? <laughs> <laughs> Just trust me. Okay. 112. Okay. Look at the Lobo guys that went out and bought Hawaiian shirts for today, just like we See, did. See, they won't be lost. No. You'll be able to find these guys. Look. That's neat. See, what you know, they did, they're in the, the spirit. The managers wore the, the Hawaiian shirts, and the trainers decided to go with the Hawaiian shorts. So it was Nobody part of the told deal. him you don't wear a T-shirt under a Hawaiian shirt. He probably doesn't have a nice hairy chest like you. He doesn't want anybody to see it. He's wearing that Second down. Oh. And a handoff up the middle to uh, Dion Marion. And Hawaii will take another timeout, 6.04 to go. So they'll have uh, one left here. Rocky Long, excuse me here, That's Greg. Uh, Rocky Long approached this trip a little bit differently than Dennis Franchoni. 
Uh, this was a little bit more casual of a trip, which I think uh, is similar to Rocky's personality. There, there were times to go to the beach. There were times to go out and meet with your family if they came out here. And um, you, you always wonder how the team's going to react to the different styles of the coaches. And, and I think the team has played, for the most part, okay tonight. And, and um, you know, this style seemed to work. Well, and they stay focused. I was, I, we were out on the terrace having lunch around the swimming pool, and we saw a couple of the football players with their moms and dads having lunch. That wouldn't have happened in the last six seasons. They had been in a room looking like they were, you know, in church. And that's just the way it was done. Right. Um, uh, not to say that it was wrong, but uh, it's certainly a different approach, a different style. And um, Rocky's, Rocky's got the, you know, the point of view that these young men need to learn how to manage themselves to some degree, and, and so he gives them some latitude. And I have not seen on the trips that we've been on, quite honestly, they've conducted themselves as perfect gentlemen and uh, have been in the hotels and in the lobbies and represented the sure. university well. Absolutely. Well, this is uh, now third down. down. Big third down. Big third down. Bubbles need to convert. Blitz from the corner. Marion has a chance, but no. He'll be short of the first down. And let's see if Hawaii uses its last time out, which uh, they apparently will not. Donnell Williams makes the tackle. Lobo uh, tight end ran, ran a uh, drag route across the center of the of the uh, of the field and was was a clothesline by a linebacker. Nobody saw it. He tried to come across the middle and almost had his uh, almost got decapitated. And no flag. 5:32 and counting. Left in the fourth quarter. Again, Jason Bloom has had two punts blocked this year. Certainly, the one at Air Force was not his fault. Good snap by Carson. Another good kick. Beautiful. Jason's maybe his best night of the year as far as punting. Let's see where they. Well, he's close mark to 50 yard average, isn't he? And they'll mark it at about the 21 and a half yard line. Hawaii will take over from there. 10, 20, 30. Now they do it 40. Forty-one yard punt there. How's a yard off? I'm sorry. We thank Georgette Lombardo for that. So with 5-12 to go, Hawaii down by the 13 points. They need a couple of scores here. Now where that punt hurt Jason's average, that's exactly what you want him to do is to punt it, you know, down. You don't want him to kick it into the end zone. Could have kicked it a little further, but pretty good punt. Well, no return, so that's that's a big deal. Quick pass to Clark, incomplete. That was a good defensive job it out was, there. It was, yeah. That's a Moten again. That's a freshman out there again. Uh, did a good job of getting his body into the body of the wide receiver just as the ball got there. And he kind of nudged his shoulder pad in there and broke up the play. It was an excellent job. Lobo still not getting a, a lot of good pressure on the quarterback. The line did a good job of blocking the Lobo defenders that time. Well, we didn't know if we'd see Moten tonight. Has been bothered by a shoulder injury. Robinson down the field and nearly picked off by Chad Smith. Went vertical. And there's the reaction. What a nice play. Chad, uh, oh, he's he, he was there, but he made a great play. He didn't get the ball. Watch this play. Beautiful play. Well, you got to just put your fingers together. Touch your fingers together when you're going across like that, Chad, and you'll catch the ball next time. Ball went right between his hands. Now, there was a situation where the wide receiver for Hawaii did not keep the concentration on the ball. It went through Chad's hands, bounced off his shoulder pads. Martinez Williams did a much better job. So did Kirk Robbins. You know, same situations earlier in the game. Third down play, third and 10. 5.04 to go. Robinson down the middle and incomplete. Overthrew his man wide open. Dwight Carter was wide open. Daryl Moten's playing at the nickel right there, and Daryl's uh, real grateful for that, uh, that pass. <laughs> he was, uh, Daryl was on the ground. Oh, you see him at the 35 yard line. He's getting some real valuable time in here. Okay, that's Marcus McDavid. That's Walter Bernard. That's Walter Bernard's spot. He's actually playing the corner. He's oh. getting some valuable playing time. Hawaii will go for it on fourth down. Now they got Marcus and Walter back in because it's going to be a long pass. Trip set to the bottom here. Fourth down play. Across the middle. Caught but short of the first. Now it's going to be very close. 
And now they're saying it was an incomplete oh, pass. Oh, it's incomplete. It incomplete, was excellent. so we don't even have to worry about the Marcus uh, McDavid came up and stuck him right below his shoulder blades in the back with his helmet and his hands all over him. See how he brings his hands in there? He strip, you know, you get your hands in, you get to wrap yeah. them around there, and you start flailing those forearms, and you cause the guy to move his arms and not make the catch. Well, that was a case where he let the ball get to his chest rather than catching with his Sure, chest. but Marcus affected that. He really did, because he's underneath him. In there. Well, I like that defense. He's yeah. getting better every he game. Is. They're both getting better. In fact, the defense is improving. 27-14. Lobos now will try to work a little clock. Reginald Johnson up the middle. Short yardage that time. And again, we'll call Stephen Gonzalez's name. And Hawaii will take a timeout. So the Lobos in great shape with 4.43 to go, up 27-14. to 14. New Mexico will play at home at University Stadium against Fresno State next week. And then we go to Provo, Utah, where uh, the Lobos will play BYU. And, and this BYU team is not that great of a team. They're, they're a good team. Tonight, they win at home to San Jose State, 46 to 43. Now, that's not exactly the BYU team we've seen in the past. Well, it's the BYU offense. They just forgot to bring their defense. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Hey, San Jose State's been a surprise this year, haven't they? They have. They are they are better than what we thought they would be. In the Pacific Division, San Diego State, after beating the Lobos in overtime last week, up 4-0. BYU is 3-1. Utah, San Jose State, Fresno State, and UTEP are in at 2-2. Two and two, And New Mexico hopes to get into that win column tonight to end a five-game losing streak. In the Mountain Division, Wyoming is now the only unbeaten team. Air Force and Colorado State at 4-1. SMU a winner today at UNLV. TCU lost to Colorado State. And UNLV now with 13 consecutive losses. Longest losing streak in the country. But if Hawaii loses, they will tie them for the longest losing streak in the country. That is not very good for the WAC. What we should do is whoever has the best record this year gets to go with us into the WAC. <laughs> Make it a one-year <laughs> deal? Yeah. Quick pitch, Reginald Johnson. Good block has outside. Has corner, Holman Wiggins. Almost knocked down the uh, the DB over there, and uh, uh, Wiggins runs out of bounds. Gain of about eight yards, uh, stops the clock. And uh, not Wiggins running out of bounds, Johnson rather. When you're blocking up the field like that, and you're just getting in their way, and you're just getting in front of them four or five yards up the field, you've done your job. You don't need to cut them down. You just need to get between the ball carrier and them so they don't make the play. So that's a seven yard gain. You'll take that every time on that pitch play. We had a shot a moment ago of Fred Van Oppen, and uh, they kind of looked, told it all, shaking his head. Well, they had lots of opportunities tonight. You know, there, Lee, inside the 10 yard line. Put a pretty good hit on a couple of those oh. uh, DBs there, including uh, Williams. Donnell Williams, 5'11, 175. You know, and, and, uh, and Graham goes, what, 6'4, 210? This is uh, it's probably too close to the goal line to use that play, but have Lee run the option and then pull up for the pass. I mean, that is going to work sometime tonight if they need it. It's late. I can play offensive coordinator. Sure. Four ten and counting. First and goal. The pitch to Johnson. Good surge by the line and the fullback leading the way. Jonathan Burrow, the tight end, one of the uh, linemen down there blocking. Well, that was just a double tight end set, and they basically just said, here we come, try and stop us. And the, the, the offense wins when the offensive line gets off on the ball, and they did that play. Josh Brown did a nice job, too, number 67. And uh, Franz Dinkelman. There comes Dion Marion. Dion Marion's coming in. A little bit bigger back. Reginald must have got his four touches. I'm teasing Trooper Taylor. He knows I love him, but I don't like, I don't like that dude. Second down play. Option right side. Good play by the defender. Well done by Gonzalez, the linebacker. There's your Butkus uh, candidate coming up the middle. And there was my favorite play. Yeah. Did you re remember that play? The short side option. option. I love that play. I love that play. Very predictable play. Goes for about anywhere from a no gain to a two-yard loss just about every time they run it. 
Tonight, Lobos have rushed for 136 yards. Hawaii only 67. And they rushed for 135 of them on uh, plays other than the short side option. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, you know Bill, what? Bill, I hope they run it again. <laughs> I know. Bill Feetz is sitting at home just laughing right now because he and I talk about this all the time. We hate that short side option, don't we, Bill? Third down play. Fake. Time. Looping it. Too far. A lot of coverage in oh, the end yeah, zone. He threw coverage. that ball away. Uh, there were four, uh, four defenders over there and three receivers. Five defenders and three receivers. Well, they flooded that area, and uh, Hawaii was there. Just a good job. Well, here comes Jason Bloom now to try the field goal from a spot at uh, just outside the 15-yard line. Again, Eric Jaworski will hold. Lobo kicking game seems to be back, and maybe I should wait until this one goes through. On its way, and it is good. So Bloom is now three for three, the nine points, including uh, three on a 52-yarder. And that extends New Mexico's lead to 30 to 14. Well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, confident after that field goal to call it. <laughs> <laughs> Prior to that, two touchdowns, <laughs> one, and, and it's happened this season. So I think I'm going to call it. I'm okay. going to go stick my neck out and say it looks like the Lobos are going right. to, it looks like we're going to have a nice flight back tomorrow. Absolutely. It does make it Albuquerque. Uh, better, doesn't it? It sure does. So, Greg, I want you to uh, watch Wheel and Win, will you? I will. Okay. When, when's it come on? Well, let me tell you. Are you ready to watch Wheel and Win starting Monday when you watch Wheel of Fortune on CBS 13, 10, and 6? You'll have a chance to win $113. Enter to win when the puzzle answer appears. Then watch CBS Southwest News 10 at 10 for your name. It's that simple. Watch Wheel and Win with CBS 13, 10, and 6. How does that Monday, work? How does that work Monday. again? Sorry, I'm not going to repeat it. You need to pay attention. Well, the Lobos drought, all those L's, well, that's about to come to an end. There's going to be a W placed at the end of it now that you predicted it. Do you get to put it in yellow when it's a W? Yes, you do. Good. A little pooch kick now Spot by kick. Mike Ross. Spot kick. Up to 22. Up the middle. And once again, it's the wide receiver doing the job for... Hawaii, Wesley Morris. So he's had a busy night. Wesley's uh, Wesley's shown a lot tonight. He's uh, been one of the big players on the team, been the bright spot in the Hawaii, the entire Hawaii game. That was the spot kick. You see, you kick that down to about the 25-yard line, and then you don't want to return. Uh, we got the spot part right. We just haven't got the no return yeah. right yet. Well, that's that is a difficult kick, though. Yes, because you need he to put it in the right spot. The Lobos just didn't tackle on special teams. 2.16 to go. The Lobos up 30 to 14. Robinson gunning it downfield, overthrown. This, this Hawaii team, they have a lot of rebuilding to do. They, um, they've gone the J.C. route. We've talked a little bit about that. But when you go to the J.C. route, you expect to win. And well, you know, you know the, the, I mean, at least right away. The coaches will it. tell you, though, Mike, that the J.C. transfer is not going to help you his first year. You're going to get one year out of most of them. So it's you really, uh, you really, uh, you get yourself on a, on a, on a wheel there. You just, you just get yourself sure, on a wheel when you do it's that. It's a real gamble. Borchers coming in from the backside. Boy, he laid a hit on Robinson as the, the pass goes uh, out of bounds. Oh, man, that's Borchers' first big shot of the night. That was Casey Johnson out there, red shirt, uh, Junior, yeah, from West Palm Beach, Florida. But number one, hadn't seen him in there before. They're playing everybody tonight, aren't they? Yeah, they, they needed to with some of those injuries. A lot of injuries tonight, and, and actually the Lobos so far, with, with the exception of Tyler Fenwick's, what we're told is a knee injury, and we don't know the extent of it. Uh, the Lobos have gotten away pretty clean so far. Germany Thompson with the hip pointer. But Hawaii has had more injuries downfield and overthrow. And again, Jason Morton Purvis. Up. Yeah, Jason Purvis, Purvis is there again. Looking for Craig Stutzman that time. 
And uh, I'll, I'll tell you, the Dan Robinson's going to be very sore. Well, the second ball. half, Jason Purvis is, uh, has made a big difference. He's gotten a lot of pressure from the outside, from that defensive end position. They were um, they were looking for Jeff McRae to apply a lot of pressure tonight. He was supposed to be the the blitz end, and then Jason is the one who's who's been able to do it. Now you don't know whether the, the offense has just given it to him and not to Jeff, but he's certainly been there and he's been in the quarterback's face. Even if you make him throw a tenth of a second sooner than he wants to throw, you've done your job. Fourth down play, complete. First down. Now I'm bragging on Jason there. I'm bragging on him. Well, and he kind of lollygagged into that pass rush. He's about to be getting tired. KJ Friday on the coverage there, and, and it'll be a first down Hawaii. Again, our next telecast, two weeks, November 7th, from Provo, Utah, where the Lobos will take on BYU, trying to upset the Cougars for a second consecutive year. What and and, and a, what a beautiful place to, to play football. That stadium, the mountains, and they should have a little snow on it, don't you think, when uh -huh, we get up there? I think so. A little snow. One thing about the places we go, it's beautiful areas. Hawaii here, great setting. Anytime you go to Utah, both places there. I think they had some snow in Salt Lake. So it's just, what, 50 miles up to Provo. Yeah. So they probably had some. Anyway, that mountain should have them. It's just a beautiful vista. I can hardly wait to get there. You know where one of the underrated sites is as far as the stadium? Albuquerque. I think, you know, with the background, uh, the sand the is there. I think that is beautiful. Well, it is beautiful. And uh, it's a little bit far away, but it still doesn't uh, oh, well, deter for, from the low. Well, well, Albuquerque is a beautiful place. And all we need is about, uh, what, 15 thousand more seats in that state and it'll be even more beautiful. We showed the cannon there. It has not been fired much tonight. Robinson steps up, has his man, and that'll be good enough for the first down. And that's uh, the wide receiver here at David Delora, his second catch of the night. Sophomore from Oahu. You know, one, one thing this Hawaii program is going to have to do they're going to have to get more of the local good players to stay here. They're going, they're going to Stanford. They're going to BYU, and they've done that before, but it seems like in more and more numbers, they're leaving the islands, and they're, that is hurt. They're contributing at other schools, no question about it. We had a tight end, Kavik Ordenstein, from over here. who's a fine athlete. First down. Robinson's going to get nailed. He got rid of it. It's complete, and that'll be a first down. Dwight Carter over there. And Robinson was nailed and his Brian down. Erlacher. Yeah, Erlacher got him good. With 137 to go. Scrappy quarterback to get up from that, I'll tell you. This is gonna hurt up here to watch it again. Man, oh man. Give him a lot of credit for completing the pass. Chad Smith Mystery Stevens, who came over and wow. Henry's coming from his defensive yeah. tackle position. That's a, that's amazing to see Henry moving like that. Henry's a big guy, 275, 280 pounds. Why trying to punch it into the end zone? That's Fred Lau again. You know what? We expected Lejante McGowan to start, the true freshman. I haven't seen him out there at all tonight. And, and you know he was their interception guy. He had three interceptions coming into the game. I thought we'd see him too. No, talking about the, the Lobo defense. Oh, the Lobo. Yeah. Yes. The, the freshman. Well, they, they, they put uh, they put Tisdale in, and they put uh, Mike Barnett in, and they, they're really uh, playing that fifth down lineman with the linebacker. Yeah, flag flies, and, and that'll be pass interference or holding one or the other on uh, Darrell Moten. Oh, no, my mistake. It's not 30. It's 20. Yeah, it's Marcus McDavid. Yeah. But that's what they coach. He... Uh, Receiver got behind him in, in college football because of the way the penalties called. The coach is tough. If he gets behind you, you tackle him. Don't let him catch the ball. Tackle him. Yeah, that was going to be a hold and penalty no matter what. Yeah. He was doing it even before he got beat. Defensive pass interference. Spot foul. First down. So Hawaii, they'll move it all the way down to the two-yard line. So Hawaii has a, a golden opportunity to get their third touchdown of the season. Or not of the season, it may seem that way, but of the night. With a 108 to go.
Robinson's got him down there with guys hitting him all over the place right after he throws the ball. So you gotta, you gotta hit the it end to zone him. touchdown. Third for Wesley Morris tonight. And I guess it's something for Hawaii to build on here a little bit with uh, the Morris and Robinson connection with 105 to go. Well, until the Lobos kicked that field goal, this game yeah. was still in doubt. Uh, well, the Lobos uh, have lost three games in the last uh, 60 seconds or in overtime. So uh, everybody back in Albuquerque that's still up is probably still holding their breath. Well, it's, it's a 30-20 game. They'll go for two here to make it an eight-point game and then an opportunity. Theoretically. Theoretically. So this is a big potential stop for the Lobos because most certainly you will see the onside kick in just a moment. Well, and you got to take your hat off to the to the rainbow offense. I mean, they took the ball and they just marched it down the field. Did an exceptional job picking the Lobo defense to pieces in spite of getting hit every time he threw the ball. You got to hand it the to Robinson. Clock is down to one. They didn't get it off, although no whistle and it's batted away. But a flag. That's the second time they failed to get the play off and the officials missed it. Penalty against New Mexico. So they'll get another chance. Well, and the referee at the back of the end zone, behind the play, threw the flag. Defensive pass interference, half the distance to the goal, repeat the untimed down. How do you miss that? I, I don't want to get on this too much, but I mean, that's twice. And this was a little bit closer than the other time. But as far as the well, play is concerned. And especially with a team that has a history of running out of time. The Rainbows have done that all season long. They've yeah. run out of time. They've audibled. Kind of like what happened to Graham and Lee in the first four, four games. Right. They've been doing this. And they did it twice tonight and didn't get called on it. That was Walter Bernard there with the penalty. Try it again. Oh, he's hit. It's incomplete. Great pressure by Henry Stevens. And Robinson is down yet again. Stevens got through there unbelievably quick. That was an amazing play. Henry. So the lead remains 10, and that is a huge 10. 6 3, 265. Boom. And he got the ball off. He got it off. And he boy. threw the pass. <laughs> a little celebration there. Ranty Harper likes that. Ranty looks like a baseball player, don't you think? Yeah, yeah it's been really three does. years in the St. Louis Cardinals organization. Mm -hmm. Now, where are you when you're in the St. Louis Cardinals organization? Do they have you at corporate headquarters? <laughs> or are you, uh, are you on third floor, second floor? You know, I always hear that they were in the organization. Yeah. Well, where in the organization? <laughs> you have several options. And, and when you were Ranty, they were in the sticks a little oh. bit. And that's why he's playing football now instead of baseball. Well, and he's traveling by plane rather than bus. I understand they travel by bus a lot <laughs> when you're in the organization. That's right. All right, here's Hawaii's onside kick. They fake that. No, they're kicking onside. No, they, they have to kick it onside. They're kicking no. onside. 39's going to kick the ball down there. Germany Thompson is in for the first time in the second half. It's going his way. And Martinez Williams still loose. And it's pounced on. Somebody got to it awfully quick. And I don't know if Martinez Williams batted it back on purpose, but it, it seems to be a very smart play. And, and there's Kirk Robbins hauling it in. Let's see it again. This should be a good angle. He did hit it back. Well, he hit it back after he didn't catch right, it. Best right. hands on the team to the second best hands on the team. That, uh, that'll stop your heart. Well, it really would Rocky have. Long got a couple new gray hairs down there on that play. <laughs> well, he, he would have, especially if they had made the two-point conversion. And now Mike, there's still a lot of time. There's a minute, too. Eight. <laughs> we, we've seen it. We've seen it. Kirk Robbins is playing free safety for the Lobos. He's the guy way in the back. Graham Lee goes down. No more timeouts for Hawaii, so Graham will probably take a knee in. Run the clock right down. Have to do it one more time. New Mexico ready to end its five game losing streak. And uh, Von Oppen and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors now stuck with the 13 game losing streak dating back to last season. Well, the Lobos uh, 
the Lobos uh, salvage the opportunity to still have a winning season. Absolutely. Three victories and five defeats. This will be Rocky Long's first whack victory as a head coach. And New Mexico will go to one and four in the Western Athletic Conference. I think this is Rocky's first win over Hawaii. I don't think um, I don't think Rocky beat Hawaii when he was playing. There's Jim Fenwick there shaking Rocky's hand and big relief. Rocky, I wish we were doing your coach's show on Monday. I think we should take a vote. No, no. Sorry, <laughs> brought it up. New Mexico wins it to improve to three and five overall and one and four in the Western Athletic Conference. The Lobos take it, 30 to 20. Extra dessert on the way on the flight home. We can smile. You don't have to have that scowl on oh, your face. Oh gosh, I hate those flights home when you have to be sad. You are sad, and then you have to look sad because because you um, it's, you're, it's expected. Again, it's 30 to 20, New Mexico over Hawaii. Solid victory for New Mexico. We'll return to Honolulu in just a moment.